There we go. Sorry. Um, first of all, I'll, I'll call the meeting to order. And now, do you guys want to introduce yourselves online? Sure. This is Kevin Barry. I live at 12B Forest Pine Spur. I'm on the HOA Junior Board for the Pines Association at Forest Ridge. Thank you. And uh, this is Mike Norris. Live at 16 or have a have a unit at 16A Pine Bluffs Terrace and uh, am on the uh, board of the um, Pines Association as well. Excellent, thank you. All right, um, first order of business is uh, meeting minutes from three different meetings here. Let's start with December 19. That was a, the, the work session on the budget. Any? I didn't have anything, no. I'll make a motion to approve them as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's make sure these are the right ones. Yep. I just that one. We have non-public from that night as well. And I'll make a motion to approve the non-public meeting minutes from the 19th. Second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then I'll make a motion to approve the December 21 regular meeting minutes. Just stack them up right there and I'll be able to look at once. That was a motion. You want to second that? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Then I'll make a motion to approve the um, December 21 non public meeting minutes as presented. Second the motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. And then we have the January 3rd that you need to motion. Because you want to make a motion to approve the minutes of January 3rd as distributed. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Abstain? Abstain. I know you guys already voted on them, but can I just make um no <laughs> um on the on the ninth on the December 19th meeting minutes, I just realized that La Valley is spelled two different ways. Um in section four, it's spelled I think that's the correct way, L-A-V-A-L-L-E. -L -L -E. And then, but on line 81, it has two E's at the end. So we should probably just correct that. What date was that? That was for uh, 1219. So I'll make a motion to correct the La Valley spelling on the minutes of 1219. What's the correct? I, I think it's the the way that section four is. It's the L A V A L L E, the Valley, um, resident singer. And then in on the uh, January third minutes, on line thirty eight, it's spelled with a Y. We can motion to change that one. Good yeah. count. Second vote. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry. All right. Nope. Okay. Sorry. Next thing on the agenda is a discussion regarding the um, roads up at the Pines and Forest Ridge. The bonds, correct? Yes. The bonds. Yeah. Have they petitioned to have the bonds released? Um, I, I believe that um, uh, Mr. Shepherd has reached out to Carol asking for the bonds to be released. That's on the January 25th uh, planning board's agenda. Okay. Uh, to have not the bonds released, excuse me, the uh, escrow for the detention pods, not for the road bonds. Okay. Gotcha. 
for the ponds, the, 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 the funds, the monies that were dedicated to the detention ponds, not the roads. Okay, so so those um, that bond number one has the um, uh, code enforcement and Ray looked at those and are fine with them. Yes, so they have submitted as built and they have submitted the uh, documentation needed for the town engineer to sign off on the detention ponds that they're working as originally uh, approved and the original intent. Um, what is still up for discussion, and um, I believe Mr. Shepard knows this, is if you look at this purple uh, form in front of you, mm -hmm. um, the approval was granted with conditions, and one of the conditions was that um, Forest Ridge, or let me read it so I don't... If you look at condition number two, it says a maintenance bond of $35,000 shall be provided. And then it says once the detention ponds have been constructed in accordance with the approved plans, the, the maintenance and operation of the ponds and associated stormwater management features shall be the responsibility of the Pines at Forage Ridge Condominium Association. Uh, see letter from uh, Richard Elliott dated July 6, 2020. Mm -hmm. Maintenance and operation shall be in accordance with the approved stormwater management uh, or stormwater inspection and maintenance manual for the pines. Um, in the event that the pine CA lacks proper authority to take on the responsibility and exercise the power necessary to maintain and operate the ponds, then unless and until such time as the ponds CA as the pines CA does have all necessary authority, the declarant, which is um, MMC, which is the um, Mount Coolidge construction, mm -hmm. um, its successors are assigned, shall be fully responsible for the maintenance and operation of the ponds. And so long as MCC is responsible, the bond needs to stay in place. So Carol has asked uh, Mr. Shepard, to produce documentation that the Pine CA has assumed maintenance and responsibility of the pond um, before any sort of monies could be released. And we have yet to see that. Gotcha. When were the ponds completed? This uh, past summer? No, they're technically, I think they thought they were done construction this past summer, but upon um, Ray Korber reviewing the plans, they did not meet the criteria. There was a, there was a small discrepancy uh, in the criteria uh, to, from the original intent or the original approved plan. So they had to go back in and do additional work to the ponds. And I believe that was completed in November, maybe or late November, early December. Um, and since then, uh, they have submitted the uh, the plans to Ray, the as builds, the mm -hmm. final plans, and they have been approved. So, yeah, they actually came before the planning board when it was this close and asked if we could essentially give a waiver, a waiver of it, yeah. basically to play what was de minimis mm -hmm. uh, 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 difference. Mm -hmm. And the planning board board voted not to do that. Um, obviously, the the whole approval of the plans was pretty contentious that the homeowners had other ideas of what should be done um, as the planning board we can't mandate someone build something you can either approve what they have proposed or not and uh, with some uh, uh, you know important ideas and changes we approved a plan and when they came back and asked for the de minimis changes uh, the, what I believe was unanimously voted no. I, I believe you're um, right. be, because it was so contentious, right. you know. And again, our feeling was that um, we're we're handing we we know that we're going to be handing responsibility of those ponds over to a different entity, mm -hmm. association, um, who objected to the way to the plans in the first place. The last thing we were going to do as a board was was allow them to not even meet the standards. That the homeowners association didn't want. Right. So that's where we stood. 
but we were waiting for those changes and how they've been made. Correct. Okay, so um, the, it's the planning board that votes to release the bond, which you said is on the, the agenda for the upcoming meeting. Yes, and it's it needs to be noticed by public hearing. It needs to be, the butters need to be noticed that the whole, you know, the whole gamut um, that was done uh, last week. So um, the public hearing is proposed for the 25th. Okay. But again, they have missed their number. We we have yet to see the you know second condition um, fulfilled. And again, that'll be up to the planning board to correct decide if that's been met or not. Correct. Okay. So is there anything that this board needs to discuss? As far yes. as the ponds, the ponds. go, no, I okay. don't believe so. I think it's in the planning board's hands. Okay. And um I think. It, it's you know that was part of the condition of the approval. Okay. Um, I'd like Mr. Chairman to hear from the homeowners association that are present uh, on the Zoom call. Yeah. Was the before we do that was there any um, thing brought up by Mr. Shepherd or anyone else about roads up in there? Not that I'm aware. Of. Okay, so they're not asking for it. <laughs> No, nope. the only thing they're asking currently is for the escrow monies for the ponds. For the ponds. Correct. Okay. All right. Just wanted to make sure that I knew that answer. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, do either of you from the uh, from the uh, homeowners association want to talk to the board? Yeah, uh, yes, we did. And uh, this is Kevin Barry again. And while I was emailing Karina over the past couple of months about an on-site, so I'm switching gears a little bit, an on-site road construction bond agreement that was executed on September 4th of 2014. Um, and we're just trying to get some understanding of the issuance of that bond and then the release of it. So Karina, are you still there? Sure, yes, I'm here. Oh. I just, <laughs> my do we want to close out on the pond issue first before we go? Well, I mean, I, I thought the pond issue was going to be, isn't that in a meeting upcoming? Yeah, I guess I guess in January, on the January 25th meeting, I guess. So from a, the condition that says that the association has to take over the <clears throat> maintenance of the pond, right? I don't know what documentation Michael Shepard needs to provide to that effect, but I think Kevin just recently, I think as a result of us hearing about this, we reached out to Mr. Shepard. We did. We did. We got the. We didn't have the, the, um, requirements right in terms of the, uh, upkeep and maintenance manual that goes with the pond. So we're still reviewing that to understand exactly, um, what our responsibilities are for maintaining the pond going forward. So I don't think, at least at this point we're ready to say we're, we're good to go on taking over that until we understand exactly what that means, right? Because we just really got the information. So hopefully we can close that by the 25th and move on from that, but- uh, Yeah, I mean, I, I think so. I think that's the least of our worries. I think our bigger worry is the roads. Right, right. I just wanted to close on that since it was brought up. <laughs> then we can move to the road thing, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, Kri go yeah. ahead, Karina. Yep, so- um... I was made aware of two road construction bond agreements that we have uh, with New Jefferson Holdings. One is for on-site road construction, um, and the other one is for off-site road construction. Um, so the off-site road repair bond agreement um, was in the amount of $100,000. We currently still have a bond in the $100,000 amount. Um, it is specifically for um, repair to its existing condition prior to the start of construction at the Pines of damage by New Jefferson or its contractors to the main road at Forest Ridge used for construction access to the Pines. So essentially, the roads that were there prior to constructions of the pines, if there were any damage done to those roads off-site. We still hold that bond. It's still in the amount of $100,000. That's kind of been static for since 2014 when it was first initially established. So we do have um, proof and documentation that that is still intact. 
I guess the bond that's in question is the on-site road construction bond. Um, and that was originally in the amount of $100,000, I believe, does it say that somewhere? That, that's correct, right? Yeah, so it was originally in the amount of uh, $100,000. Um, before my time coming on board, at some point in 2021, the bond was reduced from 100000 to 10000 and that's where it currently sits at the $10,000 mark. Um, kind of digging into it a little bit more, it's kind of vague and gray how it went from 100 to 10, um, but part of the provisions on the on-site bond is that um, the town, on advice of its engineer, has agreed to accept an on-site bond in the sum of 25% of the, of the construction cost of the on-site utilities in roads. At the annual anniversary of the issuance of the on-site bond, the town agrees that New Jefferson can reduce the on-site bond to the sum of 25% 25, 25 of the cost to complete the on-site work. So what I imagine happened is New Jefferson said, it's only 40 grand to finish the roadway. We're reducing it to 25% of that. Therefore, we're reducing it to $10,000. I, again, that's an assumption that I'm basing this on. I have no documentation that I can find from the prior town manager that said, yes, this has been approved, or yes, this hasn't been approved, or yes, you're okay to do so. I don't really know what led us here, but this is where we are now. Yeah, but just for clarification, was this a one party deal or was there a second signatory, signatory to this bond agreement? This bond agreement is between New Jefferson Holdings LLC and the town of Lincoln. The signers on the bond agreement are the former town manager, uh, David Yeager and John Imbrezia. Right. So and that that's why we were attending today just to find, get a little clarity on the history of this because section four of that contract indicates the reduced onsite bond will be terminated upon completion of a finished coat of paving at the pines. And as you know, there's, there's still four units that need to be built. And in the interim, the roads are being destroyed up here because of the construction that's going on. So as a board, we looked into this and Karina has been very helpful to kind of piece this together for us, but we weren't sure what transpired and wanted to get your thoughts about you know, what we can do for next steps. As, as Karina said, um, we, and I was included in that, aren't sure where, where that reduction took place. I found out about this uh, probably a year ago, um, but it was still after, after the reduction was made. I forget if it was my chef, if someone was questioning us on it and I did not know it was reduced. Um, I believe that your summary is accurate though, that, that um, when they finished the main part of that loop, um, it was after that that they came in and asked for the reduction uh, down to the $10,000. Um, you know, I don't know, <clears throat> first of all, when it happened and what the estimated price was at that time, it should have been in the $40,000 range if we reduced it down to 10, and that has, that was gonna be, 25% uh, of the of the total um, to to fix that or uh, finish that spur that remains un, unpaved. Um, yeah, I think the issue is so that the there's there's basically two roads, right? The spur, which is where the new units are, and the um, the terrace, right? Um, none of the roads were repaved with the top coat. Um, so I, I, it'd be interesting to see, and I, I suppose you don't have it because we don't have much documentation, 
on what transpired is if, if there's any documentation on what the $40,000 actually contained because um, there's just been a history of unmet promises and, and you know, frankly, deceit on this whole project. So and we yeah. want to make sure we're in the loop to, to like sign off on any, like if somebody says something's done, you know, I mean, I, I yeah, I mean, we'd like yeah. to understand the process going forward to at least make sure the money the town is still holding back is held back right. till the till the till it's completed, right? We only took over as an association from the builder because the 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 law stipulated that after five years it had to be turned over to the owners, but the project is not completed. There's still two buildings and four units um, that have been in a state of disarray for, for many years now, which right. is nation's board. So we have limited leverage if the town doesn't help us out here to try to get this thing finished off so we can just part ways and, and be done with it. But yeah, just want to make sure that the other bonds don't get released based upon people that haven't been very truthful from the beginning, um, stating something that isn't in fact true, right? Um, I know we probably can't fix what happened in the past relative to the bond getting reduced, but sounds like we at least have 110K or the town does to hold over the developer for 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 some other issues that you know we just we would like to have at least a conversation or be involved in the conversation should other things get presented you know right and we just wanted to bring this to your attention also that the pines hoa is completing work that the builder has not completed that we're paying for that's the situation that we're in right now. So we just wanted to number, as Mike had said, we just wanted to bring this to your attention as to the status that that we're working with now, um, and that we haven't transferred. There hasn't been an official transfer from the builder to the Pines Association, other than the fact that the building has been going on for nine years and it's still not complete, and we're defaulting to take the responsibility on. So it's it's a very unnatural situation that we're put in as homeowners here in the town, as taxpayers. Have you sought any intervention by the AG's office? Because as you know, the subdivision there was, I believe, approved by the AG's office. And many times they hold power that people don't realize um, what they can or cannot do. Yeah, we've had a couple of conversations with different legal counsel, um, the latest of which was we were um, referred to somebody else because they were the um, the master association of Forest Ridge legal counsel. So we got some unofficial advice from them, but we haven't been in, in contact with the AG's office directly. So that's good information. I did, we didn't know. Right. Uh, you know, so that's kind of why we came here. You guys got, got any insight in terms of where we can go with, you know, we see money that the town's holding. We see that as leverage, right? At least so we're in sync with what's done and what's not done. Because <clears throat> we kind of reconcile this and then we're trying to pursue legal avenues and other things. But, um, you know, just trying to feel our way through it a little bit, to be honest right. with you. Right, right. Well, I will say it's helpful that you bring the issue to us just to make us aware of it. Yeah, yeah. Like like you said, that hundred and ten thousand dollars is definitely gives you leverage. Um, the town didn't really have an established procedure for releasing those bonds um, in the past, but the planning board uh, now is having a um, a requirement for the for the applicant to come and request through the planning board that any bonds related to the conditions that the planning board set um, before they've, they've been released. So, so there is a safety check now where both of those bonds, just like the one coming up next week, right. the other two bonds are gonna have to come before the board, they're gonna have to be publicly noticed. I don't know if you got the courier, but there's, there's an ad like this long and the courier explaining right. um, what's happening. Um, and that same process will take place for each of the next two bonds when they request them to be released. So, yeah. so you will be made, made um, 
aware of it through through the public posting process. Now we have, we appreciate that very much. So, yeah. um, I I think that's all we really wanted to cover. We just wanted to have a dialogue with you, and um, you know, we have been working, um, you know, with Rick's daughter and son. Um, but we are in a situation here where it, it doesn't seem to be moving forward with the completion of the construction. Now, I don't know what the town's uh, ability is to make that happen any faster than... No, I, I, the only thing that I would bring up, I mean, there's concern about the equipment and the condition of the property. Um, there's two 500 gallon diesel tanks on that property. Uh, there's construction equipment on that property. That, that's not secured. So I don't know whose liability that is if something happens at that property, but it's certainly not in a in a state of normal condition for construction. There's no oversight up there. Uh, I moved in a year and a half ago and I see it every day. Is, is that same construction company involved in anything else that's going on up in the pines? The pine the, the pines has four two buildings, four units yet to be completed. So that's the Right. Um, the environment that Kevin's talking about. There's also on Woodland Loop, um, there's another cul-de-sac. I think it's 10 units, five buildings that is in a similar state of disarray. That's a different junior association of the Forest Ridge. So we I can't speak to the details there, but I know um, that's a mess too as well with construction half done you know, vehicles left in, in the cul-de-sac. Um, I'm sure those owners aren't too pleased, but I don't know exactly what their status is, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I believe that the the ones in the pine specifically, the foundations are in, mm -hmm. I believe, but nothing else has been completed. Correct. And I believe the foundations um, are in disrepair as well. They're not, they're, cr they're cracked in there. It's been at least three years since those were poured. So there's, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, some, I don't know what the status of that building is and new new owners going to take, you know, property, you know, without the, without like a building inspection process in New Hampshire and stuff, it's, it's, I don't know what the, you know, what we could do. Obviously, obviously, if you're concerned about safety, I mean, the town has a responsibility, Yeah, uh, both its fire chief and its code compliance. So, sure. I mean, you know, I suggest that you put something in writing um, if you haven't already, um, to the town uh, manager, to Karina, and, uh, you know, we'll take a look at it. And if it means getting state officials in there, um, that's a possibility, too. Okay. Yeah, yeah definitely got to be an EPA issue with those fuel tanks, right? They're at the top of the hill. It's going to, thinking about retention ponds, that, that's going to flow right into that. You know? And I know Ryan Fairbrother goes up there periodically because there are some very minimal like erosion and sediment control things that need to be continued to be done you know once spring hits throwing some grass seed and and, and whatnot down um so it is on his radar um but as far you know as far as enforcement goes that's kind of a unknown of what we actually can do up there so we can dig into it a little bit more if we have to yeah this was this was very good feedback though in terms of getting in touch with the AG's office and some of the formalities. Yeah, we, just a that. quick question before we sign off. It, mm -hmm. So we'll put this in writing. That's that's good, and we'll get it to Karina. So thank you. It, if something transpires, like what's the could the town pull? You know, their permits to continue construction until things are resolved and make sure that you know what. What would the town do to Mount Coolidge relative to that? Is it a, a cease and desist until these things are done? Or is it like, please take care of this at your earliest convenience, which won't happen? Well, I mean, the town can issue a cease and desist, but I think there's nothing 
that there's nothing to cease at the, at the moment. Yeah, they're I not, mean, they're already ceased. But they're I, not, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I'm thinking is, you know, again, I was just talking about leverage, right? So we have the bonds and I'm assuming somebody wants to make money off of those four units that aren't done, whether it's the construction person or the, the people that funded this project in the first place, there's money to be made there. If we can somehow affect their ability to move forward on that until things are reconciled, you know, that that's another avenue to kind of- Well, yeah, Mike, yeah, so, Mike, I mean, when you're talking about leverage, our concern on this call was we still need to get the second coat of pavement at the pines. Right. The driveways are cracking, the road is cracking. We've, we've had experts look at it. So we're just trying to understand, do we, do we as homeowners and taxpayers now have to fund this because the builder is not obligated to, to finish out what they started? So we're, we're trying to sort through that. Well, the, not... the, the, the town, um, I mean, again, I can't speak for the planning board, but the planning board should not release that $10,000 bond until all of the interior roads are complete. And that includes the second coat. Right. Um, you know, will, will the uh, construction company and the owners walk away from the ten thousand dollars, so that they don't have to do any more work, um, that's going to bring up a larger legal issue, <laughs> um, probably with three parties involved. Well, and similar to the the offsite road construction, until they say the construction is completed, that hundred thousand is doesn't not stay. Does it right? It, right. It's right. not going anywhere mm -hmm. um, until mm -hmm. it's completed unless unless they come forward and say we're never going to build those last two buildings we're going to fill in the foundation we're calling it a day right i mean they could potentially do that but then they would still have to satisfy the completion of the roadway before we would re you right. know, release them right is my assumption i guess yes right and and we're just having this conversation now in in case we go down that route Sure. A year for a year from now, two years from now, you know, whenever. So, do you own the roads now as they currently exist per the terms of the um, covenants and the homeowners association documents? Is is that correct, Mike? Because of the five years, I believe so. Yeah, so yeah. Like I, <clears throat> like I said earlier, it's defaulted to us because this is nine years. Mm -hmm. I mean, we own the upkeep of the roads, but we 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 always understood that there was a provision which had to do with that inside bond to finish the paving when the construction was complete, right? Both the outside and the inside. So we were surprised that the the bond was reduced on the inside, you mm -hmm. know, and now that kind of left us a little bit high and dry on the inside roads that we are technically accountable for, but they never met their obligation relative to finishing the construction when it was done, right? So this, both of those roads were all hindered around the completion of the project. And then they would, they would do the paving when the project was completed. That was the, you know, either written or unwritten agreement. Um, so we were surprised that the bond was reduced because then that reduced our bill, our ability as an association, if they walk away to get that money to complete the roads, right? Now we're out, you know, that money, right? Yeah. Um, so that that was why we were um, a little bit surprised that that that, that happened. But like you said, you know, if you own the roads, you control the roads. Um, you can decide who you're going to allow access over those roads. Um, you know, sometimes you have to play hardball, um, put True. up the toll gate, and say, unless we allow you to come in here, in, and uh, you're a homeowner here, you're not going to come in here. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't, we as a town don't want to get involved in a, a contest with uh, between you and them. But, you know, by the way, I was the president of the uh, Forest Ridge Homeowners Association many years ago. I was, yeah. Do you, do you want to join? I, I, long before this, I was this was not on my plate. We have a foundation that you can buy in the pines if you're <laughs> cheap, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> <laughs> now, Ray's office, Ray DeMonte's office, issues the bonds. Maybe he could provide some insight as to why it was reduced. 
Potentially. Is Ray a partner in? I believe he is. He is. He is. Oh, uh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes, it seems For, as if. Uh, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize he was a partner in that. Yeah. Yes, he is. No. I hate politics. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for for presenting your concerns. Yeah, to I appreciate us. your time. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. We, obviously, we're on, we're on the same side here, wanting the project to be done and done right. Right. Yeah. yeah. We just yeah. try to figure out what our options are and how we can work together. So I appreciate right. you guys hearing us out here. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Bye bye. All right. Next on the agenda is special warrant articles. Another rundown. A little a rundown. Um, it's so essentially in my town management report, yeah. you see all the ones that we need to address this evening. Yeah. Um, also in the town manager's or behind the town manager's report, I did receive something from Ray Corbett today in regards to Riverfront Park. So you will see a, a more formal um, proposal. Kevin, seen it. Kevin has not seen it yet. I've not seen it yet either. It's in. Uh, oh, see it now, yeah. It's folded up. It's in its I own kind of little. Yeah. Um, Kevin, you can have this one because I got a big one too. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll see from uh, Ray Corber's little email uh, before the cost breakdown is that uh, this is a revised estimate um, based on the contamination that was found and um, more recent price estimates for the various elements of construction. Um, he did break down the estimate in both phase one and phase two to keep with the phasing discussion. Um, they are still waiting, uh, are still having discussions with DES regarding what is acceptable remediation strategies. He did, I did speak with him today on the phone. He did say that they are competent in their remediation strategy, but yet um, not all the uh, divisions at DES has given their kind of nod of approval on them, but he did say that they are confident um, that if they do have to change anything, it wouldn't be uh, significant. Um, uh, and then also that the, um, the, the comparison is also based on a 6% inflation um, from the previous original design that I think was done back in 2020. Um, so as you can see, I think um, the number we need to focus on maybe today is the, reme the demolition remediation and site preparation, because that's essentially what will need to be done before we can move forward with any phase um, if we choose to do so. Um, and right now that phase, he, he's estimating at $1.2 million. Now the Brownfield grant that we didn't get was because we didn't have the information needed. They wanted the additional. But that program is still ongoing. I did speak to him in regards to the Brownfield yeah. grant because I knew that question was going to mm -hmm. come up. And <laughs> I said, what's the next step? If we right, were to right, go right. for additional funding, what is the next step? And he said, absolutely, we could go for additional funding for the actual remediation yeah. and not just the assessment. Um, those applications come in the spring and the fall, um, so we could apply for it. Um, but he did say just as kind of, you know, uh, uh, not a forewarning, I don't want to call it a forewarning, but it would be similar to the assessment grant where then we're on EPA and DES's timeline. You know, it, it would be taken out of our hands for the most part and then put into um, their hands. And obviously we can suggest things and maybe have contractors lined up or with something to try to expedite the process. Um, but essentially that would be a, you know, an EPA and a DES driven project. Well, it's not something the town can do without it. We just can't. I, I don't. We can't spend a million dollars on that when we have water lines that need to be done. Uh, I, I mean, don't disagree, just, right. Yeah. I mean, I think um, we have a police department bursting at the seams. We can't, <clears throat> we, we don't have a choice but to go with the Brownfield grant and hope for the best because we can't be putting a million dollars into a park when we have water lines that need to get done. And I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't disagree. Needs. I think, um, I think we just, I don't disagree, Tammy, at all. I think 
if we are going to continue to move forward with this project, which I think it's a worthwhile project Absolutely. and the town has support in it, um, we need to do it through a Browns field or at least attempt to do it at a low cost option for the town. But I think we just need to maybe gauge our expectations of when this is going to happen and how it's going to happen um, because we could apply for them and we could apply for the spring potentially if we had our ducks in a row, which I think Ray can probably get his ducks in a row for it. Um, but we might not find out about the spring grant until the fall. And then we're in 2024's construction season and 2024's timeline and how long it will actually take to put out an RFP and get contractors and do the remediation. Then we're talking about potentially 2025. I just think we are, for Kevin's sake, I think we need to, you know, and just for the town's sake as well, just so we have a realistic expectation of when this project could be completed. Um, it, it, it's not going to happen in 23 or 24. It's my personal opinion. Kevin, did you tell us at one of the meetings that there's a time frame that your grant funds have to be expended by or something has to take place? Otherwise, the, the grant funds get forfeited back. Yep. And what was what was that time frame? Uh, long, right? I think it's, it was a year. So I think it's the end of 23, mm -hmm. end of the current year. Is there any possibility of getting an extension on that grant? If, you know, this information was put into a packet that you could make a presentation to somebody. If there is actual progress, excuse my yeah. <laughs> anger yeah, here. No, I agree. If there is actual uh, pro progress, then yes. Yeah. But I will say that this has been my ultimate fear and we're, I'm standing right in it. And it's not just me, it is a lot of other people. And um, it's frustrating to get to this point of almost anger. Yeah. Yeah. And I certainly understand that. Um, you know, I remember back, it was 2017. We had a study done and there was some minor a calyx. A calyx, right. Yeah. You know, there's some minor contamination and it sounded like it was going to be, you know, move where the parking lot was to put it onto the sturdy mm -hmm. areas. And, you know, it, 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 it sounded like it was going to be easy to deal with. After five years of study, we come back and really the, the next step was to do more studying which was that last meeting I believe you attended. Um, it, it, it's, it's been a frustrating process to get to, you know, many people at the beginning were saying, oh, you can never build it, there's too much stuff in there. And then the, the, the initial test reports came back where, yeah, there's stuff there, but it's not that bad. Well, now we're looking at $1.2 million just to clean it up. Um, I will say this, it's not just to clean it up to, Ray wanted me to just make sure that we understood that. Um, it's not just to clean it up, it's also to prepare the site for construction. So he said they're going to, his example was, it's not just remediating the soil, it's also bringing in wow. new soil and mounding it so then we can build stuff on top of it. So, um, so is that the... At, our, at the last meeting, there was discussion about moving the elements or portions of the site being being able to be constructed on. Is that is that gone? Yes, I okay. spoke to Ray Corber about that because we were saying, you know, the, the skate park is less than five thousand square feet. Do we even need to do an AOT? Can we do we do we even have to go through those motions? And Ray Corber said DES won't sign off on any sort of piecemealing of the project together because they see the bigger picture and even though the skate park is only 4,500 square feet or whatever it is and it doesn't it fall below the threshold for the alteration of terrain that DES will never sign off on something knowing that it's part of something bigger.
we need to keep moving forward. Not as fast as we need to, but we still need to keep moving forward. So frustrating. I mean, there's two elements here that make up the bulk of that $1.2 million. And that's the excavation, which is 875. Mm -hmm. So that's two thirds of the, the cost right there. We're just taking, taking, up, taking out, stuff out stuff yeah. that doesn't belong there. And then gravel backfill of putting something else in its, in its place. Mm -hmm. so, so that's over a million dollars just Take it out. Yeah, I mean, you can talk about, okay, the clearing and the grubbing, we're gonna to have to do no matter sure. what, but that's 45 grand. Um, you know, so the, these other things are minor, you know, it, it's over a million dollars to do the mitigation portion of this. Correct. Right. What about alternative locations? Do we go back to 2014 and start talking about that? Sure. I mean, I'm serious. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean it, it, at this point, everything's on the table at this point. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I think even 2025 is is a rosy picture scenario I mean, because yeah. if if we're if we're saying we're not going to move forward without Brownsville grant, um, 2025 would be if we got in line for it this spring and was a little food. Um, but even that, we've seen how long these studies can take and approvals can take and all of that. Um, we might not be at the top of the list in 2023, but either way, you're gonna lose, you you know, or you potentially would lose some of that, all of that grant funding that's, that's pending on a timetable. Uh, do we look at the community center, the camp rec? Do we, you mean just for the skate park? Yes. We don't give up the park itself. No, I'd say we can keep moving. Yeah, I think we on the try for the Browns field if we can, but I think for the, I think the, I think for the skate park 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 parks. Though, well, so I, think, I think you're right. So that's part of the decision is do we, do we, Kind of take all the momentum out of the skate park project and put it on a two, three, five year delay until we get a Brownsfield grant, clean that up, and move forward with the whole big park. Or do we put it somewhere do that else? Either. I mean, it's it just stinks because the the skate park is the heartbeat of that whole project. Truly, but now we move the skate park and we have this awesome skate park. That's never going to happen. But I think the Bradfield's been, we'll get it cleaned up and it'll sit there. Right. But I would also hate to see the skate park. Oh, I absolutely not happen at all because this brownfield takes us another decade. To I get don't disagree with you at all. You know, I would rather yeah. see the skate park happen at the community center or at the Kank or something to actually come to fruition than wait another decade because a decade from now we might not have that grant and it might be a million dollars to build the skate park or whatever you know the it, I, I just feel like I would I know that the skate park is the heart of that park but I would rather see the skate park happen than not happen well they're the only ones that have raised funds I mean that yeah, have I mean, dollars they're ready to go. They, have hard, they have hard cash ready to go right you know we're holding them up. Uh, Agreed. Right. You know, so something should be done so they don't lose the energy, the funds that they've already put into this. What are like, your thoughts, Kevin? Huh? Yeah. You know, I, Hank Rec Center and the Community Center are certainly hubs for local activity. I think they're great venues for. So you'd like to move ahead with possible alternate locations and not wait on anything, yes? I am totally with you on um, it being the yeah. catalyst for that project. Well, no, that's I think right. it's going to happen in my lifetime. Yeah. My, before my son is 18, I am 
I am skeptical right now. <laughs> before I reach 100, I don't know. <laughs> to do then in that case is before we we talk about this, I'd like to do it with um, more stakeholders. And I, I don't want to just make the decision tonight. Agreed, yeah. I'd like to put it on an agenda and get it out there. Um, but how do we? We're gonna, in two weeks, we're gonna talk about an alternative location for the skate park and make a decision and dig in the dirt this spring. But I wanna do it noticed. I want people to know that that's what we're gonna talk about at the next meeting. Yes, are, are, is there 7,000 square feet at the community center, can you correct that is? As if are the community five center there is, absolutely. The community center there is. I think there's more more available room at the community center. No question. Um, you know, but it's also a residential area, so we, we've got to let the people that live around there know that that's what we're talking about doing before we just make the decision to do it. So, yeah, I think you're going to have more support than not, honestly. No matter where it goes. Um, but we just definitely have to. I agree. Does the mountain have any land they donate, Kevin, for a skate park? You mean the White Mountain National Forest, Judge? No, no, no. I don't think they're getting paid. It's donated. You know, the river lot, pocket lot, or something. Okay. Parking the river lot? No, we don't have. Yeah. You know, again, I. I think that our current recreation and community spaces are, are great venues. They have, they were our alternate locations. We have been focused on that area because it had been the catalyst and there's you know, support from the PD and uh, emergency services around that location. And, but you know, I'm, I know my speak for my committee here is we're at the point we just need to do this thing. <laughs> Again, as I said before, we, I, I can't, I can't keep waving the flag if there's no momentum and it's slow, for sure. Well, our next meeting is the 30th. Correct. Can we put this on the agenda and get the word out there that we're going to talk about alternative locations for the skate park? That's what the board likes. What we'll do. Yeah. Jim? Yeah. I can say something. I know probably a lot of people right now like what I'm about to say, but with the motels that are being built now and the motels that are going to be built, I don't think tax dollars should be spent over there until we have the water, do we have sewer, do we have a new fire station, do we have a new police station. I go along with putting the skateboard park someplace else. But we're spending way too much money over there on a piece of land that it's not going to be worth what taxpayers are going to put into it. Jim, you're talking That's about the park itself? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, whole yeah. Yeah. the whole plan. Yeah. Right. If you will. I mean, how much are we pay in Bay Corbett? So, and, and everything else. Well, that's something too. It's a skateboard a park someplace else. If we don't, um, don't worry about that. Until all the other stuff, we got a million dollars up on Route Three. How many millions for a new pollution plan is coming up? Mm -hmm. Even in my lifetime, it's coming up. Mm -hmm. The water, we got to do something with our water. Police station needs the police need a new police station, and we might as well build the fire station when we build the police station. It'll be a lot cheaper than building one and then down the road build the other one. And get that done with the town's tax money, uh, taxpayer money instead of wasting it over there. That's kind of what we just said that we can't justify putting taxpayer dollars in there. We have to apply for the Brownfield grant. We have to. But several, even if we never build a park and we never do a darn thing with that piece of land, we still have to clean it up. We know that there's contaminants in there now. You know, they clean it up, but after we don't have a choice. The water stop is being done. Well, if we, that's why <clears throat> we'll continue to apply for brownfield grants, and it won't cost the local tax oh, yes. so the grant will right. clean it up and just let it sit. I mean, we're not going to be able to not ever do anything. We're going to have mm -hmm. to clean it up, even if we clean it up and let it sit and never do a darn thing to it. We still got to clean it up. So we have the money to do something. Yeah, which. 
reminds me that on the 30th, um, we're going to have to discuss the grant that we received that we're not going to fulfill now. We have a $200,000 grant that uh, <clears throat> we've spent most of the matching funds trying to get to spend the grant that's now going to have to go back. Yeah, we've spent, I think, roughly like 115 of it, yeah. of our share of it. So essentially, we, were, we will have to eat that mm -hmm. 115. Uh, but that was, yeah, matching funds. But we're going to have to give that $200,000 back now. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, Jim, you make you make a good point, and and I think the, you know, the board was looking at this would be a um, reasonably priced mitigation process again back at seventeen, and from then till now we were thinking that there was, you know, a couple of spots here and there to to, to mitigate. That's what we were told. Um, and now we're looking at one point one point two million, right. or at least a million of that is mitigation. Right. Some of it's what I mean, the site prep, but it's, it's a million bucks. That it needed a whole lot more than yeah. that area over there. But with that being said, I also agree that, that there are other options that, that we really should look at. I mean, I wonder if the community center, uh, I mean, it's level, it has parking, it's, you know, there's, there's an there's a infrastructure in place there that would enable us to move along more, more quickly, I would think, you know, as, as the Kank wreck. I'm just not sure, I can't envision a place at the Kank wreck of where to put it, but maybe we need to go up there and walk around and, and maybe, do we want to have a like the meeting week. next week that starts early? It includes a viewing over at the community center where we can do a site visit, point and look and then go over to the cake and do the same thing. I mean, I'm familiar with both properties, but I've never walked them with the eye of where could we put this facility um, with that. I mean, I guess I should ask the board first, would that make sense? Sure. Is that something that? I'm happy to participate in that for sure. Okay. I mean, all, all the people that have donated money for that skate. Yeah. Want to see it happen? They want to see it. Happen. They want to see it happen. That's that's the thing is, I mean, you know, this, this isn't about Kevin and his son. This is about a <laughs> huge segment of our of our population has has supported this through numerous fundraising events. It's Ten years now. Right. Yeah, I mean, and it's not like the the interest has waned off over that period. I think it has accelerated. Actually, there's there's a lot of people still enthused and. You know the whole it's getting close and we're going to do it is is you know fired some people up i, I don't want to pull the plug on this i'd rather go look at other sites and see where we can, right. we can make it happen as, as a taxpayer i don't want to spend any more money over there and that we are not going to have a choice until we have money to pull it up after we've done the stuff that really needs to be done Okay. All right, so next meeting. Next meeting, I'll, I'll put all, alternative locations for the skate park on the agenda, but do we want to meet Monday okay. next week during daylight hours? Do you want to meet, meet at 4? It still gets sort of dark at 4.30, right? Yeah, I would say maybe meet at 3.30 to 4.30, because by 4.30, we're getting dark. I'm There's plenty of we go. The next meeting, so two the weeks. Next thing, so oh, the, the, the next meeting. Yeah, the next meeting. Next week. Yeah, let's meet it. The meeting starts at 5.30. I think we should, I don't know if a half an hour is enough time. I'm just wondering about people who are interested in coming that are, work, are working during the day. You know, I could do it at Sunset. Sunset is on at 4.54. All right, we could do it that at day. four then. Yeah. Have an hour. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I'll be late. No, well, actually, yeah, no, I, I'll pick up kids at four. So I'd be there with seven of them, but I'll be there. They'll just have help. We'll see if they can run around, see if they're, they'll get yep. a ground splat. Right. Break the sleds. All right, break the snow. Let's start at four. Yep. Let's, let's do four o'clock. Is that 
at the community center at the community center four o'clock at the community center, the community center is not 30th. a good time 30th monday monday yeah. yeah don't do not do four o'clock at the community center absolutely let's not. do four o'clock at the cank um <laughs> Well, no, <laughs> no, we can't do that because four o'clock is a changeover where you're going to have ski team coming in on a Monday, on a Monday, ski team coming in for practice and kids leaving four o'clock at the community centers pick up. We're going to have to have a morning meeting sometime. We're going to have to do it 10 a.m. Someday, one day this week before Monday, we're going to, we're going to have to, because four o'clock is pick up. You've got kids picking up at the uh, parents picking up at the child care center and at school program. So or a lunch hour meeting or something. Yeah. We could do whatever, but it's doing four o'clock at either place <clears throat> on any day except for Friday at the Kank is going to be impossible. Saturday or Sunday? Um, I could do. Jack, what does your weekday schedule look like? I think I'm teaching in the adaptive program uh, this Friday. I know that up at Bretton Woods, as a matter of fact. Thursday, I'd be free Thursday. I can do tomorrow. Thursday, we have um, uh, mediation. Mediation. Wood at mediation. At yeah. 10. Nine, I have 9 30. I think it's, yeah, I think it's. Yeah, I blocked off from 9 o'clock on. It must be 9 30 because I'm going to be yeah. here. Yeah. So that's the I could do I could go right afterwards, right? Well, it's probably yeah. don't have time to notice it. Never mind. Want to do Thursday at noon? I'm gone Wednesday through Thursday this week. Maybe okay. next Monday. How about next Monday? I come. No. I would have to be. That's the twenty third. Twenty third. Yes. I'd have to be done by eleven thirty. What about Tuesday? The 24th? Yeah. That works for me. That works for me. Kevin? I'll make it. Sure. Jack? I can make it up. I'll make it work. Um, 10 a.m., noon? What do you want to do? Yeah. Noon? Noon? Noon on Tuesday the 24th. Tuesday the 24th. At the community center. Oh. No? I'm just thinking to food pantry day, but I don't think that's a big deal. Yeah, no, I think it's fine. She's in love yeah. too. I think so that'd be fine. Tuesday the 24th at, at, noon. at noon at the community center. And then from there, we'll go to CAG. So a meeting at the community center to start with. Mm -hmm. okay, I just want to make sure I go to my calendar right. Center. Okay. Anything else? If, if you have anything else, I don't want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your support. Uh, thank thank you, Kevin. I wish you coming in. Different, uh, conversation. Yeah, I'm sorry it's this way, Kevin. I don't know if I want to keep it. Okay, no. Yeah, no. I'm shredded for you. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. All right. All right. So with that said, are we taking any sort of special warrant article off the table for Riverfront Park? Yep. yep. Well, but I'm we can't well, spend any money. What's on, on there right now? It's on our Nothing. draft. For special, I don't have anything Nothing. for Riverfront Park on there. Okay, right I didn't think I didn't think so. No. No, but I do want to pursue the yeah. Brownfield grant, the Spring oh, Brownfield absolutely. grant. Okay. Absolutely, hundred percent. Pursue that, and if we can get it cleaned up through the Brownfield grant, great. Okay. 
and then go from there. But like you said, even going from there, it's going to be two, three years. I, I just think we need to be realistic in our expectations. And it, it's even if we get this Brownfields grant, it's going to be a couple of years. It's yeah. going to be a couple of years. Yeah. No, I, I get it. I don't like it. But I, I don't it. like it. Yeah. I mean, I don't think anyone likes it, but um, I think. I think I, I agree with Jim. I agree with you. You know, everybody yeah, that we can't, we can't, can't when we when we have infrastructure that we need to maintain right. and upkeep that takes precedent. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so we will move forward with Brownsfield. You can have a fun conversation with Tara tomorrow. Mm -hmm. No, no warrant. She, we had lunch for Lisa's birthday today, and she, I think I gave her a copy, and she got a copy of it, so she I think knows it's kind of coming. All right, let's start with the fire truck. Sure. Um, so, um, I, 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 after the last meeting, when we discussed bonding the fire truck. Um, and then we had the budget meetings, committee meetings. I looked at our surplus and I was trying to think of how can we fund this fire truck without having to take out a bond. Um, right now, our surplus after uh, this week's payables is hovering right around $600,000 just for this year. Um, so if you take our $600,000, and again, we have one more week for the books are open, but I mean, it's not going to produce another $200,000 worth of bills. Um, with the 600,000 that we're gonna roll into surplus or call it 550 or whatever you want to, rolling into our undesignated fund balance, that's gonna take us up to over $2 million in our fund balance, which is gonna take us to our maximum threshold that DRA likes us to have. We're gonna- We don't usually roll it all over, we just take a portion normally. We can add it too. The, the fund to offset the tax rate. No, but every year's surplus rolls over into the undesignated right, fund. Right, 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 and right, then, right, 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 right. And, and then you take the end of it, right. Yeah. To offset the tax rate. Right. Um, so my suggestion was I talked to OJ about this. Rather than take out a bond for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars or take out a bond for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, that we propose to take three, four hundred thousand dollars, whatever the board feels appropriate, appropriate, put it on a warrant article to go into the fire department capital reserve. So that way, over the next three years, that way we can sign into a contract for the fire truck because we have it in cash in our capital reserve. Mm -hmm. And then over the next two years, that cash can make interest for us as it sits in the bank in the capital reserve. And then in 2025, when we take possession of the vehicle, We'll have the cash, and we've made interest on that cash for two years. I don't have my capital reserve on me. What's in there right now for that truck? Uh, two hundred and it's just over two, just over two, two fourteen. I want to say. I, I don't. And know. what's scheduled to go in for 100. that truck? A hundred for two years. So that brings us to three fourteen for next year. A hundred for next year. Yes. And what was the price of the truck? Uh, three. It's seven, seven six seven. Seven sixty. I want seven seven sixty seven fifty with the twenty twenty um twenty twenty three lock in price. So seven hundred seventy thousand is the. I think it was seven sixty. I think it was seven sixty with the max. It was like seven forty nine or seven fifty nine. Seven sixty. Okay. Yeah. Seven forty nine. Yeah. Seven forty nine. Yeah. Oh, here it is, right here. Yeah, right now there is $214,000 in there. Next year, it's being proposed to put 100, in 23, it's being proposed to put 100,000. So that would bring our total to 314. So if we propose to put- 450. 450 in from our surplus, that leaves at least another 150 right now to go into undesign, undesignated fund balance that could be then used for the tax rate. That would bring our undesignated fund balance. Right now it's at 1.68 million. So that would bring us right up over 2 million. So we'd still be in the higher threshold of the undesignated fund balance. So we'd still have plenty of funds to offset the tax rate next year, but it also allows us to put money into our savings account or our capital reserves 
make money off it in interest for the next two years. And not have to bond this and project. And not have to bond this project. And no money is raised in taxation to do so. It would be my recommendation to the board. Basically, we wouldn't be carrying any debt for that item. No, we pay it for it outright. Oh, right. It works for me. It works for me. It works for me. Okay. So we'll draft a warrant article for 450. 450, yeah. Okay. Do we have a backup plan in case that warrant fails? Yeah, We're Paul, still going to need a fire truck. I think the backup plan would be bonding it. And I think if, if, they vote no to do it out of right out of that's so they're not going to zero taxation. Zero taxation. We're going to vote to the interest cost. They could vote to take that money towards the tax rate. Of 100%. No, they no, could, they could vote to not approve this, and then the money would still go into surplus, and we would decide what to do with it then. Right. Right. Um, if, the, if they're going to if they vote no, we don't want to put this money in that and buy the fire truck. This surplus money. <laughs> they're certainly not going to vote on a bond to a bond would be a two thirds yeah. majority vote. Right. <clears throat> Spending so. fund balance is simple majority. Right. So this if is they the turn case. this down, right. They don't want to fire. We're not going exactly. to get a bond right. pass anyway. Exactly. Um, you know, the 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 only other option we could do is like a lease purchase agreement where we wouldn't need town meeting authority to do so, but we don't want to go down that route if we don't have to. No. I think I think. The, the other option would be to, to um, present an amendment to the capital reserve item for the fire department and raise that 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 increases it above the hundred hundred that we are proposing to put in, but is shy of the four fifty that we're proposing to use from from uh, fund balance. Now, do they also also offer you a um, if you buy the chassis and a disc, you buy it now? It's discounted, and you buy the, the truck itself in separate parts. Is that part of the offer? I I don't know. I know that they gave us different price points for a 2022 price, a 2023 price, uh, a quarter one 2023 price, and then they were projecting like a, a later, latter year 2023 price. Because I do know if you buy the chassis ahead of time, say the chassis is 160000 pay it, you're going to get 25000 30000 off the price. The light truck we just bought, we got almost a hundred thousand dollars off by just doing that. By buying the chassis first, like you buy the chassis, then we end up buying an aerial, but with the pumper, and they're doing a, a walk through pumper, correct? Walk across pumper. I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not well versed yeah, in that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you buy yeah. different parts of the truck ahead of time before the truck's even made, and there's discounts for that. Sure, I imagine, yeah, I imagine there is, but. The thing is, right now, all we got is two hundred thousand, so we can't even piecemeal purchases together yeah. because we can't lock yeah. ourselves into buying the other portions if we don't even have money to do the cabin chassis. And they know? won't guarantee it if you do it that way too. They won't guarantee that if you bought the chassis this year and then something else so six months from now that they're gonna the components are still going to fit. Most of the time they do, but they won't guarantee. Well, it. and then that would require us to then again go back to town meeting right. next year and ask for more money. Whereas if we just did it now we would know we we're not paying anything now it's just going into our savings account until we and then we can order the truck and then we can order the truck this price legally we can yes. order the truck we can legally Locking enter into a price. contract and but then we can work out if the, the money is in the capital reserve we can do exactly what you said oh yeah, absolutely take right money out take money out we can pay for a piece now in 23 and we could say we'll yeah. pay the remainder in 25 or whatever it may be but uh, having that money in the account now yeah gives us the legal authority to then start negotiating or then start right, being right. flexible or trying right, to right. you know be creative. All right, so we're all on board with the yes with that. Okay. Okay. Next. Uh route three water main. So in your packets you're also going to see um a proposal from Weston Sampson. We engaged with them to give us an estimate on what they think the upgrade to the Route 3 uh water infrastructure water main would be. Um the long and short of it is, is that um, the total project cost for a, a construction in 2024 mm -hmm. uh is 
anywhere from uh, 2.2 to 2.8, depending on the material used. I did talk to Nate about what his recommendation would be or what his suggestion would be. And he said it would be to go to the PVCO piping. Yes. Or, yeah. Okay. Uh, he but, said that's just the future. There's no point in you know right. going right. backwards. It's more cost effective. So that brings us in that like $2.2 million range. On the lower end of things. The uh, only question I had, because you, your suggestion here is to um, put the three hundred eleven thousand for engineering on the warrant this year, the remainder to go on the warrant in twenty twenty four. Um, does that give us enough time to lock in construction for twenty twenty four um, and get through the bid process? We would have, normally have to put the bid process out right around the first of the year. Can we put it out around the first of the year without yeah. having gotten that money from? I don't. Meeting? I don't have a recommendation. I was just saying that right. if the board was only interested in funding the engineering side of things, oh, that gotcha. roughly three three eleven. See, I think we need to fund it all simply so that we can get have construction in twenty twenty four. Yeah, I fund it all to do the the engineering and stuff over the summer and whatnot, but get the bids out prior to December thirty first. And get that contract awarded. Yeah, you're going to want a construction contract <laughs> right. in the winter to get it right. Exactly. So to I, get on I think we need to do the whole thing if, if we're going to get it done in 2024. Yes, I was just trying to gauge how eminent the board felt this was. If you thought we could push it out, then so maybe 2025, we just do I don't, I don't think so. I don't think we should. What did we expend last year in repairs up there? I know we had some major issues up there for a while. We did. Um, there was one that it took him it took almost him a week or so, to, about a week to find it. To find Once it. he found it, it was a ball buster getting yeah. fixed. I was going to say, there's been a couple issues up there that I know yeah. that it took him a significant amount of, right. amount of time to locate exactly. where the issues were coming I don't from. think we can wait because I know that three, was it three breaks last year just in that one in area. That one area. And it's and that's fairly typical. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I um was just wanted to gauge the board's thoughts on like, is this a 23, 24, 25, 26? What 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 do we envision? When do we envision this happening? I would recommend bonding the whole 2.2 this year. I think sooner than later, personally, yeah. yeah. I agree. I, I think we should put on this year. I think though that that if if Nate said that he was um, in support of using the, the PVC, mm -hmm. his the estimate here for the PVC project is 1.6 on the last page, right? 1.6, Yeah, and that was that. This is the very last yes, page of this package. Back sorry. Uh, that is. This is just. This is no. This is Taylor. Pond. Taylor. Pond. This, this is, is just an estimate of what the work that needs to be completed. If you go to yeah, this, this page, page three of Weston Sampson. Back in two thousand eighteen. Yeah, utilizing alternative pipe materials result in a total project cost of approximately one point one using HDPE pipe and approximately two point two utilizing PVC pipe. Right. This was. That was 2018. I think I think that's, that's not us. I think this is their example. This is their example of the work that needed to be right. completed, and that's what they were basing the cost estimates right, right, on. Right. That was yeah, confusing. It is confusing. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> no, I, I'd say bond the 2.2 this year and get the engineering done over the summer and get the bids out and in in a contract lock before the 31st, so we can keep the funds. Yeah, this was just a material comparison. Right, right. They were looking at yeah, the yeah, materials yeah, used. Yeah. It was a similar project, and they were comparing cost estimates. Yeah. In 2018. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, it would be, I think, the 2.2. 2.2 plus the 10 for fees. Right. Did you have to list, like, the bond fees separately? On the warrant article, two point two plus ten thousand or whatever it is for the bond fees. It's stuff. like it's usually like a bond warrant article reads. It's like the you, the the principal is up to this amount, and then the yeah. selectmen have the authority to negotiate different rates and whatnot. So, um, 
I think to be safe, we would probably maybe like 2.25 just to give us a little bit of a buffer or something. So, you know, we can always take less, but we can't take more. So we don't want to be stuck right, in a right, right. scenario where it's like, oh, crap. Where is there anything in the CIP that could cover any of this? Um, I think there's probably some stuff right now with Nate has in his water rehabilitation capital reserve. He has four point, uh, oops, excuse me. Uh, he has 884,000. How much of that do we need to use for the water tank? Uh, <laughs> all of it. <laughs> Yeah, I would say a good portion of it, but I also think we were going to use uh, water tap fees and mm -hmm. for the water tank. And I think um, between the water and the sewer tap fees, we have close to a million in each of those accounts. We have like 700,000 in one and 800,000 in another. So we could um, use some of that as well. I think if I remember correctly, that was part of the plan to use a portion of that. Right, right. Well, tap yeah. fees, yeah. Tap fees. Um, but Goshen was going to pay what, 1.3 or 1.2. Yes, something along those lines. Um, and then we have the million dollars for the, uh, the, grant. the grant, but that's a match where we have to put 500 in and then they put 500 in, so that right. brings us to the million. So at least we have to find at least 500 and then probably more like 750. Mm -hmm. if we're getting to that 1.2 million for our share is what I'm going to guess it's going to be. Um, right yeah. now, I would room the, three, I would water. 2.2. 2.2. I would suggest we put an, an article, warrant article to bond the 2.2 and a warrant article to immediately fund the 311, but say 325 for the engineering. Yeah. Two separate warrant articles. Two separate warrant articles. Obviously, if the 2.2 bond issue passes with the two thirds vote, we don't need the, we don't need the other one. Okay. But if the bond article fails, we will at least have enough to move forward with some engineering um, to hopefully be ready to, to yeah. move to the town again next year. And what would you say? 300 and 300. It, it's his 311. His, his, 311 is his number. We'll say 325. 325? 325. Yeah. Again, because this isn't. Yep. Nope. Again, it. Whoa. It's, a, it's, a, it's an estimate. Estimate. Right. Okay. I think that makes sense. And I'll, I'll get updated figures from uh, the banks for the 2.2 over, I don't know, how many years yeah. you want. What are, what, on average, do you remember like how long your your larger ten. bonds were, were just the 10 years or did you go out to- It was the three roads we did longer. But we did longer. The last couple that we've had were 10. We're just 10. Okay. I'll, I'll see, but I guess I'll get maybe a 10 and a 20. Get a 10 see. and a 20. Okay. I mean, that's a big bond. It's a big bond. I mean, that's a $200,000 payment on 10 years just on principal. Mm -hmm. right, right, right. I'd get, I'd get both of them. Okay. So we'll do 10 year, 10, 20. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, new on. public safety facility. Yes. Uh, we met with LBA last week to discuss a program redesign for a police facility only, but still have the ability to add on in the future. Um, we will continue to work with them. We meet again this Friday as well. Um, we went over, I supplied them with your um, kind of bulleted point sheet. Um, they understood, they, um, you know, they were obviously, you know, disappointed, but they are very much aware of the situation we're in and their understanding of it. Um, we are doing a, um, we have a, union negotiation on uh, tomorrow. So Scott, Chad and I, after that, are planning to do a powwow to look at their program design and look at the different rooms and the different, what can we get rid of? What can we reduce? They are also doing on their end, they're saying, what parts of the project can they reduce costs for as far as materials and supplies and, and those type of things? You know, we express to them that, you know, 
can't be in the double digit rain or this, you know, this project's not going to move right. forward. Um, so we are in the process of updating those cost figures. We are in the process of creating a program redesign. Um, I don't have a figure for you. They're going to try their best to get us a figure before the public hearing. Um, but, you know, time is a ticking. So we're just trying to take advantage of it as much as we can. Um, With a redesign, it's in the single, not the double million digits, but the single yes. digits. Yes. What is the estimate for um, the design? I mean, what were the, you know, plans, the, the plans, the building plans? That's the next step. The architectural one. Ar yeah, yeah, the yeah. schematic designs or the Thank construction you. designs. Yes. yes. Um, I, I did ask them, he's supposed to provide me a quote by Friday for those. Um, he said the first step, basic schematic designs, which wouldn't be as built or wouldn't be construction designs, but it would be the next step. He said it would be around 20 grand. And then the next step is what? Another 20, 30. And then how many more steps before we get to this is design? Well, it, it's going to be more than that. Once you start to get into schematics and actual architectural drawings mm -hmm. for construction. Purposes yeah, I think to it's going to be bid. close. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be I mean, the bid a couple hundred thousand is my guess. It, it, it'll be substantial. Yeah. Yeah. When does the budget committee meet on warrant articles? They are meeting this, uh, this next week, next Tuesday. The Warren articles. The Warren articles next so Thursday was the snow day, but now it's going to be police, fire, and uh, cemetery. Gotcha. So we had a snow day last week. Is there a possibility the town could be the contractor? Like actual construction. Like actually, we do the job. No. No. Like who? Who would build it? Yeah, we would hire. We we would get the plans and we would contract it out. Would be the GC, but yes. do it all with subs. And I'll tell you why. City of Manchester just did it. So the answer no is not an answer. They just did it. They're the contractor. They hired fulcrum construction, do most of the work, and they saved about three million dollars. The city of Manchester probably has an engineering staff. <laughs> <laughs> I think they yeah. use the same contractor. LBA, the same architect. Yeah, sure, but the, yeah. but they have full time employees to manage that project. They actually have a captain on the fire department store. He's the manager of the site. He's a clerk of the works for them. Yeah, he's he's overseeing every little thing, and they, they save a ton of money. And I talked to him the other day, but we haven't had a meeting since then, so I didn't bring it up. But I talked to him. He's not even Bob Planey. You're welcome to call down there, and he's actually in a trailer. He's a captain. He's overseeing the project. And he have, he sees everything from the concrete to the rebar to everything, and he's overseeing this. Fulcrum is a place out of London. Derry, their contractor, and they're working with him, and they're actually building their own firehouse. I don't have. I mean, that there, there are there are, there are contractors in this town that probably build ninety percent of that building, except for you know maybe some of the structural steel, but. We have Jim here too. Oh and yeah, I don't disagree that when that project was out to bid, yeah. that we were hope to get local contractors to right. do the work. Right now, you're, you're, you're also paying a contractor to get a contractor. You the know. last time we had a building in town that had the quick of the works, it, it, it ended up it didn't work because look at the building. I mean, there's so many problems and issues, and we had to sink money, good money yeah. over bad, just to. It's just an option. I think one of the. Yeah, and I don't think it's a bad idea, but the city of Manchester probably has 300 yeah. employees, right. where the town of Lincoln has 16 full-time employees or right. 20 full-time employees. I mean, if we had a full-time employee that, A, have the time to do it and the knowledge and expertise to do it, absolutely. Yeah, if, you're saving, not. if you're saving a million, even a million dollars, and you have an employee that you just hired just to build a, the station, it'd be well worth it, because you're not going to pay your employee a million dollars. Yeah, no, 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 but, definitely you not. Know, and if you had local contractors do the excavation, I mean, basically the building is nothing but a, a commercial building that they build around here all the time with steel studs and sheetrock and electricity and plumbing. Right. And like I said, I when project goes out to bid for construction, we hope that all of our local contractors bid on it. We hope to get a better price right. than what these architects are Absolutely. giving us. But these architects are just giving us an estimate based right. on the projects that they have done over the last few years. Like they don't know what the final number is. It's going to come in for 
gym or for someone else who's you know professional in that field. I mean, I think we are going to try to be as cost effective and as cost efficient as we possibly can. Can we do some of the site? Can can Nate do some of the site work? Can you know like? Sure, we're going to look at every avenue that we can. But as far as like, I am not a construction manager. Can we hire someone to be the construction manager? Sure, but I'm not going to be valuable on site saying, is this, no. is, is this meeting code? Um, but again, I would hope that local contractors would be bidding on this project and we could get local guys to do the excavation right. or local guys to pour the I'm just trying to cut out the middleman because yeah. sure. the middleman is going to make 15, 20, 30 percent. Oh yeah. So if it's a 27 million dollar building, he's going to make three or four million dollars for basically overseeing work. Overseeing the work. You yeah. know, if you have a little common sense of construction, you have an idea what's going, use your resources, you can get the project built. It's not rocket science. I mean a firehouse is basically a garage except for a few extra things in the police station, except for some of the security reasons. It's a it's an office building. It's a glorified office building with special glass windows. And, you know, it's going to, you know, it's going to be brick halfway up or something. I mean, it's nothing. It's not rocket scientist. That's for sure. I mean, I'm just trying to think outside the box. I mean, we haven't had a committee meeting, so I didn't bring it up, but I figured I'd bring it up now. Sure. Just, just an idea. Yeah, I think we should keep that in mind as we as we move forward and see what, what um, you know, for, first thing we need is to either get the bond or at least the engineering money to, to, to take the next step. I would like to bring both before the town meeting, hoping that we get the bond pass in, and then we can just continue with the with the workflow, you know, as the engineers design it, hopefully we're starting right after the March meeting, get, get, um, a design that's ready to go out for bid and do that in the spring before the following year's town meeting. So you're saying twofold again, right? I, I think that that's a plausible way to go. You know, you're meeting Friday, so you'll have a rough cost estimate for a bond issue. Well, I think based on OJ's, they they said if we wanted a super soft cost estimate, we could take our construction costs that they get that they gave us, right? Based on the square footage and divided by but divided by like third. what OJ did, you know, a couple of weeks ago. I mean, yeah. that would give us a very soft cost estimate. We're not going to have. A, a firm specific no no, no we're not going to have a firm but i mean we could take you know and you know i did mention in, in friday's meeting that the basement should be a slightly lower cost you know or a lower cost to to build and construct because of just it's the basement and it's not you know above ground um and they they didn't disagree with that you know so we could take a variation or you know ask them to give us their best case estimate um in order to do so but um I think we need to know the full schematic design, a full construction design, like bid documents you're talking about design. Okay. What that would cost us. Bid yeah, what that would cost us and what they guesstimated document cost. Designs, yeah. What construction would be for, you know, cost based on the square footage. And then, yeah, the square footage. Um, and the particular. Right. Square footage. Total building. And we still don't want to reach out to a grant writer to see if we can get any grant funds for this. I mean, I, I'm not, I don't disagree with that. I mean, I think, I, I, I don't think we should have done this meetings ago. We should agree to reach out to a grant writer. I mean, see, a grant writer at this point in time would only be for the, for the um, architectural fees and right. things like that we because you don't have a, thousand dollars for a hard number or even a design yet that you can say we want to build xyz you know you can yet apply for a grant um, to design architectural drawings that would go up to bid but we don't have a number for you know, to go after a grant to say it's going to cost a bond. 10, 10 million or something like that. Okay. Yeah, but we don't have, I agree, Timmy, but we don't have, I can't show the, the, the right. grantee, I, or the grantor, I can't show them. Here's what it's going to look like. 
it all gives I don't away. agree to putting a bond on the warrant for this without um, reaching out to grant writers first. I don't, I just can't. There's money out there. There's been money out there for a couple of years. Um, there was a ton of money out there last year. I am not a grant writer. I'm not. I don't know the ins and outs of the specific grant writing things. Small grants I can write, but not yeah, something right, like no, this. I, I agree can't. too, right. There are professional grant writers that for short money can at least tell us what's out there and what could be available. And then you have to pay them whatever the fee right, is the to fee. write the grants. But um, And without finding out if there's other monies out there, I don't agree with putting this a bond on the warrant. I don't. I know there's money out there. Can you write a bond article that, that gives us authorization to borrow up to let's call it, let's say the number seven million, and to give the, the board of selectmen permission to seek grants to further offset that amount? In other words, if we get a grant, we can still we could spend the grant money and reduce the amount borrowed. Yeah. So. DRA doesn't, DRA doesn't like the up to, <laughs> DRA doesn't like that word. Um, DRA is going to say to raise it, to, 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 to authorize the board to take out a bond number in this amount. That's the maximum amount. We don't have to take that amount. All right. 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 To do that. Right. Call it seven. Call it seven. Okay. And furthermore, to authorize the board of selectmen to apply for and, and accept um, any grants or matching funds available of still giving it a limit of authorization of, let's say it's seven, mm -hmm. but we can also go out and look for the grants. Sure, it wouldn't be considered it wouldn't be considered offsetting revenue because we wouldn't have a number to it. So it would just be essentially affirmation that the town is in favor of that idea, but it, we couldn't it actually consider it. We couldn't say an estimated number of revenue. You know, right. we couldn't put a figure in there to actually offset. No, it yeah. gives us permission to go out and. To look for them, and look it, for and, and accept them. and shows that we intend to, to do that. that. Sure, yeah. Like I said, I think it would be in language, and it would be you know affirmation that that's the direction the town wants to go to. But I don't think it like legally binds us to anything. Yeah, no, I agree with that. You know, it'd be, it's more of like a non-binding of you know. Would you be in favor of that if we included that in it and do it this year? The putting it on the warrant? Yeah. Yes. I don't know yet if I'd vote for it, but we could at least get it on the warrant and let everybody else vote with their conscience. What are your thoughts? No problem. Okay. And hopefully by town meeting, we'll have an idea of. It'd be nice if we have some possibilities. But, but then again, if we get this passed, we don't have to wait till next March to actually apply right. for grants right. because right. we don't want to apply if we, you know, uh, uh, not be able to accept them until right. the year. Right. Um, Are we going to apply for grants just for a police department then? I think that's all that's being proposed right now is just a police department. That's sure. Fire departments off the list. Fire I would I would say it is this year. But this year. Now, if in applying for for grants, we we come up with something, um, you know, my assumption would be that we could uh, put that into next year's Tom Warren. Because at this point with its fire department, I'm not sure if it's practical to build a new one or Put money into what we what we have. Is the engineer came back to the room for you from the old existing firehouse? No, Ron did reach out to Ray, and I mean Ray's not going to be able to get a structure sexual engineer here in seven days. We have that report An old from a few report, years ago, right. six right. or seven years ago. I see it's older. It's judged. Uh, yeah. There's nothing changed in the firehouse, right? Yes, there was some stuff done. The floors were fixed, or well, 
There was a temporary fix under the floors. I know that they did there something was, with the floors. Yep, there, was, the roof. there was some temporary um, stuff under the roof, but nothing was, they had said then that it, that it would take a whole lot more than what we had to put in it to make it permanent fixes at the time. But I think, and now you weren't present at the last meeting, OJ had met with both chiefs, mm -hmm. independent of one another, mm -hmm. and came back with potential um, improvements to the firehouse um, that, you know, they could live with. One of them being an addition, if I'm not uh, uh, incorrect, and some repairs to the roof and a ventilation system. And um, there was one other major item there. Bathroom. What was it? The yeah. Bathroom. Fixing up the bathrooms, building another bay onto it to yeah. put the. Where were they going to do that? And they, and they was. What? what? Where would they put another bay? This side, away from the opposite of the library. The bay. Between the existing wall and the existing parking lot. Is there room? In it be, it'd be room, and they could put the. Um, not little... necessarily for a fire truck, but for um, storage. Right. 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 Yeah, yeah. 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 Rescue, right. Yeah. Rescue. And there was talk, Al, too, OJ um, and Ron, about doing something possibly dependent upon what the structural engineer set up in the uh, cupola there, the tower, uh, to see whether or not uh, that was feasible to, to make an improvement up there. And that could be a bit of bathroom. Right. And that extra bay could be um, at the parking lot level rather than the um, current. Um, garage level, and if that was the case, that addition would be two stories where you could put, you know, your, your equipment, rescue equipment in the garage below, and then offices, training room, the dirty room uh, up above. But again, that's dependent on the, the an engineer looking at yeah. it and right. looking at. You know, what we don't want to do is build a brand new building and attach it to something that's going to fall down. I want to make sure the existing building is in adequate shape, or at least yeah, understand yeah. what we need to do to get that to last a long time. So what are you putting for a price on the police department? What do you want to bond? Well, let's put a number in place right now, but then get input from yeah. They were gonna they were gonna revise the estimate based on our reduction in square footage. So then we could take what the total reduction in square footage is and use those construction cost figures to come up with um with a with a, a price. Um, and we're gonna label this police department, not public safety facility. Correct. We're gonna a new police facility. So you don't have a, an amount to put there yet? I, I don't. Um, I, I should know better uh, on Friday when we know exactly how much square footage we're shaving off the building. Because right now, I think when we discussed it last week, the, the fire department alone was uh, 16,000 square feet, um, which um, didn't really require us to take off too much to get to closer to that 12 range. Um, so we were gonna go through the program and. You know, that requires Chad and Scott to go, you know, we got to go through each room and each level to say, can we conjoin these two rooms? Can we shave this off? Do we need this? Do we need that? Um, to see how much square footage we can actually cut off. And then we'll be able to use those construction estimates to say, this is what the estimated new price is okay. without having to go back to the the, the estimator. I think it was roughly 34,000 square feet and 2,000 of it was more or less comments common uh, square footage. And I think that, like you said, 16 and 16 was, and then we had, based on what you had said, didn't come down to about, your plan was like 5,000 square feet uh, in total, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it was a 4,000 square foot footprint. On three yeah, floors. On three, on, on three floors, floors yes. right. And so it was- Which should be less, less per square foot per because square the basement is-, is Well, and they even, after our conversation on Friday, they even said that we might be able to just make this two stories versus three stories where we could have the basement and then uh, one just level for the whole police department on the first floor. So then we wouldn't have to go up an additional story if we reconfigured things a little bit. So that he's- And if the basement said, is only storage for the most part, then we don't need an elevator. Uh, if there's no facilities down there, if there's no office, if there's no, 
you know, interrogation, there's no anything. I think they were thinking of doing, having some of like the showers. The sound the port, oh, gotcha. The sound kind of port, the cells, the they booking area. Yeah. yeah, we need an monitor. They said an elevator is 30 grand, 40 grand, and when you're talking about 9 million. Right, right. You know. So, yeah, so they, we meet Tuesday morning prior, well, Tuesday noon, I should say, um, at the community center and the Kang prior to the budget committee um, meeting Tuesday night to go over warrant mm -hmm. articles. Let's so let's, we can come up with that. Let's just have, have that on the agenda for Tuesday. Okay. It, our new meeting. Okay. Following the, the following the, yeah. We'll come back okay. here following the uh, police facility. Okay. Jim, did you have something? Uh, yeah, has anybody done anything with inquiring that the pie shape from the state? I mean, we could inquire that pie shape man from the state. They could probably reposition this building. I hate to have dark designs and then down the road, we acquire this building and pay them to design something again. The design that that they had here last time. They're looking at probably getting an access to the interstate. The way that position building's positioned, I'm assuming they're thinking of using the end of Paula Road. I don't think the state's going to allow that. They they're not going to allow the end of the street exit. Uh, to exit onto the interstate, even with the gate there, they're probably going to have to have their own entrance to the interstate. So that building's going to have to be repositioned a little tiny bit to get that their own entrance to the interstate, not using the end of all the road. We already brought that up with them, Jim. We said that, we mentioned that, that we're never going to probably get access from the Pollard Road point, and we would probably have to do it in the north kind of west corner or wherever DOT tells us, but we were just assuming it would be most likely the northwest corner or somewhere along there. And they said that, you know, they agreed that they probably would never let us come off Pollock Road. Yeah, I didn't think so. No, but so um, we did We did talk about that. Um, we haven't reached out to the state for that triangle piece because we didn't want to go down that rabbit hole if this building was never going anywhere. And the main reason for that triangle piece would be for the fire department addition and for the fire department parking because that's where most of the parking was located for the fire was on that in that triangle corner yeah, there was a little bit of triangle used. right right just right. for parking right and, and essentially just the parking right. have the, the entrance to the interstate on the north end of that um which way are those fire trucks going to come in and out of that fire station well i think that's the question and that's where you're going to have to redesign this whole building so if they had that piece for wherever it, they could redesign it. I think they're designing the building right now based on us acquiring that piece. I think that's the site plans right now include that triangle well, corner. I didn't show what you missed. But what was what was sending back to them now was just a police station, correct? That they're going to design. Right, but you want that police station positioned so. We don't, don't want to have to try to move it. We're, say, we're going to position that, this way. at least in my opinion, we're going to position that in the same area that the one is there now, close-ish close, close -ish to Mansion Hill and to the north side. Right. And they talked about reducing, the, taking that parking lot from the other lot totally away and moving it to essentially where the, the fire department was, was being proposed because... The site work, if we were going to put a fire building on there, we need the higher specs for the pavement and all that stuff to be able to deal with the big trucks, where if it's just a parking area, we wouldn't have those costs associated with it because we could just use regular pavement, you know, right, rather than right. the, the heavy duty stuff. And then we could build on it in the future if necessary. That's only if you have the fire trucks go around. I mean, you can reduce the cost of the fire bay and just have guys back into the station. That's a drive through station. You can save yourself a million dollars by not having a drive-through station. Sure. I mean, and not having uh, DOT specs, highway specs. Well, right now they're not proposing any DOT highway specs because if right you, now we're not proposing a fire department. Right, we're proposing a police department with the ability to add on in the future, but we're not going to build it right now to what we need for a fire department. We're building it right now for a police. Just the police. Correct. All right, are we good with 
putting this on. And we're going to actually wait till next Tuesday to see what the numbers are. But okay, in theory, in theory. <clears throat> okay. All right. Before we move on, can we take a two minute break? Yes. 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 They're not only in person only. Person at I just lost a piece of this. That thing gets in. I don't know. It's right here. Is that coming from downstairs? Yeah. You ready? Ready to roll. Okay. Uh, next uh, warrant article is the school resource officer. So the chief has yet to discuss cost figures with the school regarding the SRO position. He's scheduled to do that soon because they obviously have to know for their budgetary purposes as well. Um, the town is going to be required to gross appropriate it anyways, um, whether or not, you know, however, the division of the cost. Uh, um, to fruition, we're going to have to gross appropriate. The so, school board has agreed to, um, you know, to helping, right, right, to, right, 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 right. But they haven't agreed to, we haven't agreed to percentage right, 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 right. the cost formula. Well, it'll be fair, I'm sure. Yes, I don't disagree. Yeah. Um, but I guess I, we just need the board to um, decide whether or not they would like to move forward with raising and appropriating. Um, the full amount for the position. I put 108 right here, but then after talking with Chad today, um, the way the grant is written is it's, they will only pay for a like base level or starter level position, but because our scale is changing in 2023, we were using the old scales numbers, which we're never going to hire someone at that rate right. anyways. So with the new union contract yet to be finalized, we thought that it might be safer if we put a base position using the new numbers versus the old numbers. So that increases the SRO total um, to about 120. So about uh, uh, 12 more thousand dollars for the base position. Okay, and that would be a total for the four years? 
No. Nope. Three years. One year. One year. But we're not paying that. We're not paying that, but the what, gross appropriation. But we have to raise the home amount, okay. and then we would collect the seventy-five percent in revenue from the grant, okay. and then we collect a certain percentage from the school. So okay. our cost figures would only be. And, and to be clear, that's not one hundred twenty thousand dollars cash for the person. That is the salary, benefits, the benefits retirement, and health insurance, um, the whole the taxes. You know the whole. Social Security. So and that every that. year for the next time. So that person goes on full time, we have to pay. Uh, we have to appropriate funds for that. You're going to have to appropriate the whole thing because it's going to every be year. a town of Lincoln yeah. employee and we'll have to appropriate the whole thing and we'll just every collect year. every year. Every right? year. That's as right. all as revenue. Right? And, and each year, year the grant portion goes down. Right. Correct. Correct. And, okay. then, and then whatever the remaining is will be split however we negotiate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why is this not going in the police department's budget? That's how it used to be. It was part of the PD budget. It, Why not have in their budget? It will be after starting next year. Starting next year. Correct. Starting next year. Yes. Um, but not this year. It needs to be a separate warrant article because we're 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 um, doing a four year. It's it's a yeah, it's a it technically. Uh, it's a four-year agreement because we have to fund it for four years. We have to fund the position for four years, 75, 50, 25. So it has to go in like the CBA. <sighs> I think so. I was it, 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 it last time, though. It was part of a police department's budget, well, even was, though that was a phase grant. Absolutely. When Will was the... Wait, I know when in the, each year is the, as part right. of the budget. But, but the, the first, first year, year didn't it go in as a... I don't believe it did. I don't believe it did. I, I don't believe it was spelled out as a separate warrant article like the CBA. I'll confirm with DRA if the that board would... is it the consensus of the board is if it can just go right into the PD's budget, we'll just put it right in the PD's budget, unless you want the town to vote on it. That's up to you guys. I don't. Well, I mean, I, I'm not. It's not that I don't want the town to vote on it. I just right. don't see why we're. It needs to be its own special right. warrant. Right. Yeah. That that is that's what I didn't understand. Why don't you check with them? Because, but I mean, some people may question, you know, oh, I didn't know we're going to have a school resource officer. And, you know, it'd be nice to say, well, we're getting 75% grants. And then eventually that person, you know, the whole spiel about it. I, I think, you know, I mean, regardless of how we put it, we're going to have those people that are going to say that anyway. They just don't. Right. I don't know. They, they only go to town meeting and don't pay attention the rest of the year right. to they either school vote or anything. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, if the board is okay with that, if we can. I don't want to say absorb it into the PD budget, but if we can just put it where it, it will be in, it was a line item in right. there. Yeah. Um, I'll check with DRA to confirm. Um, because the revenue part also goes in the PD budget. Correct. Yeah. But you don't vote on the PD individually. You vote on the PD as the total operating. Correct. Thing, right. So it would just be operating revenue. Correct. Right. Okay. If it has to be its own warrant article, is the board in favor? Absolutely. Yes. 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 No question. Okay. Good. Okay. Is that the one twenty number? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I mean, we'll put it in the the correct amount. Yes. <laughs> yes. Definitely the correct amount. Okay. So I'll I'll double check on that. I mean, if we could save a special warrant article, let's save yeah. a special warrant article. Yeah. Right? I don't. I, mean, I don't see why it has to. Be. I mean, I don't. I could be wrong. That did happen once in my lifetime. No, just saying. We won't hold it to you. Yeah, yeah, we won't okay. rub it in your face. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Next one is cemetery record retention software. Um, this is, I don't, I think you guys remember this conversation mm -hmm. between the cemetery and the town clerk and who has authority. Yes, let's over put it on there. It's all more and then everybody else. And then the they can cemetery trust each other. Yeah. You know, yeah, say yes. what they need to say on it. Let the, tr the town clerk say what she needs to say on it and yes. just let them vote on the 10 grand exactly. item. I'm fine with that. Yep. Okay. Holy cow. Yes. Okay. And then these last two are pretty simple. The new police cruiser, that's something we do every year. These are updated costs, the 61. Uh this thousand. year we're getting um the charger that we tried to get last year, right? right. Yeah. We didn't, they didn't have, have any have chargers. Yeah, right. they didn't yeah. have any chargers last year. Right. But um, these look is like it gonna be nondescript or is it? No, it's right. gonna be it's gonna be uh stickers. It's gonna be um it's gonna have right. well it's gonna be like the ones that we have now. 
Exactly. Except like, it's going to be a little bit more than it's not going to be like the black on black or something. Oh, see, I like the low pearl ones. I, I, I like do them. too, but he said it, it would be more. It's not going to be an undercover car. It's not going to be an undercover car. We don't have any undercover cars. No. They all have stickers on them. They're just low profile. And and I, I love oh, that because it's yeah, only the course. ones that don't obey the laws, the, the road laws that complain about having cars. You can't see from a distance so you can slow down real quick or, or stop at the stop sign because that car is there. It's it drives me crazy. He knew it was going to be contentious, and he made a point to tell me that it would have papers in it or paint or whatever they decide. Oh, yeah, but I hope he doesn't go back to the freaking neon colors. No, I don't think so. Down. But but he did say it would have stickers. So, and then highway block grant, it, that's that's silly. I mean, yeah, no, we get the I, money. I say no. Can I amend that in the exact the actual yes, number? Yes. Yeah, but we do the four thirty four. When we do the revenues, DRA changed it to what exactly what we get. Okay. Um, I have never been in a town that voted to accept this money, so I'm going to ask DRA if we technically have to vote to accept that because you're the board of selectmen have um at a Warren article a long time ago uh, have voted to accept unanticipated revenue and state aid as a as a blanket. Yeah, but it's it's the authorization to spend it. We every year we get the right to spend the thirty thousand. To accept it and expend. Yeah, but I don't know any other community that does that. So if we don't need to, if we could you just collect it as state, I'm gonna, if I'm going to call the DRA and get these yeah. other answers, yeah. why not? We don't have to do it. Yeah. No, if we can that. just accept it and spend it. There's no point in putting it on the warrant article in my first short in the meeting by about 37 seconds. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying my best, Tim. Yes. Okay. I'm trying Here my best. Go. Love it. Um yeah, but that's okay. That'd be great. I'll check. I mean, I might be wrong and I might have just always done it incorrectly, but I don't I've never done it in any other town. So um and I we've never gotten wait, you were wrong once too. I I'm wrong all the time, girlfriend. <laughs> okay. That's one thing that I will admit. Um Okay, great. But before we move too far into um, anything else, or if we're done, I don't know. Um, I did, Nate and I met with H2O Innovations today in regards to our contract that is up with them in April yep. for their services at the uh, sewer treatment plant. Yep. Um, and they are proposing a 21% increase. I, I was thinking that would be coming because it's... When does the contract renew? April because they oh, were so they were like two percent forever. Uh, yes, yeah. So, so they so are coming. That's... Yeah, they're um the service agreement that we have had with them previously um had a built-in CPI adjustment um from one percent to three percent, but that's the, I mean that's gone right. right. So they are now proposing a two per five year over year, um, which I think is fair and reasonable, but their markup based on um, the electricity costs. So it's, it's yeah. costing to run that mm -hmm. plant and they're paying fuel. for and fuel and chemicals. And man hours. Oh man yeah, hours. insurance. So oh, their proposed sense. increase for um, the first year is 21%. So that would bring um, our solid waste budget. I did print it out. Sewage. Um, sewer, yeah, sewer, sorry. Um, our sewage disposal budget, it would go from, we have in 2022, we had $210,000 funded. Um, it would bring it to 251. What is their, are they the reason for that whole 30,000? Yes. Okay. That it's right, it was 221.5 was the budget that we had looked yeah, at. Yeah, because we put in a placeholder of yeah. 5% because yeah. we were just like, we knew it was going to go on. No, but but um, I, I can honestly say I'm not surprised. Truly, I mean, and they, you know, they asked us to to eat the overage, the twelve grand overage in electricity. I told them absolutely not. We're not doing that. Right. Like it's cost of doing business, and unfortunately, there was something that went wrong down there, but that was out of our control, and we fixed it as soon as we knew, you know, and it shouldn't happen ever again. It was kind of a one off, mm -hmm. and we're out of that budget cycle year. If they would have gotten me a quote and an increase for it in twenty twenty two, and maybe I would have. Yeah. you know come to some sort of negotiation where we would have paid part of it but i can't out of 23 in good faith say we're paying that so i told them no and right it is what it is you know like i said i don't want it's the cost of doing business and unfortunately that was our contract and that's the way it's written out 
And I am also not in favor of adding in a built-in increase for the electricity in this contract. We won't do it because um, we don't have control over that. Um, so this is what they came up with based on those kind of unknowns. We knew it was a placeholder. We knew it was going to go up. Mm -hmm. sure. um, and in their defense, they're a very easy company to work with. And they are, they, they go out of their way to find cost savings for us. You know, they go out of their way to try to fix things themselves. You know, um, Nate is really pleased with them. He doesn't really want to go looking for another operator for that, <laughs> uh, for the sewage disposal. Um, so that's where we are. Mm. I mean, I don't like it, but yes, I mean, it's not okay. okay. Uh, and then I had I did have another question procedurally on the budget. Do you wait until the budget committee makes all their changes and then you go through them all at the end? Yes. I, I brought the changes here tonight, but I didn't know if you wanted to piecemeal them or if you just wanted to wait until the 30th meeting. We'll wait, off. Yeah, let's wait till the end yeah. and go through them all. Okay. Um, and they've been very minimal. And and they've been, been, they've been, been, been or not. And, or, and yeah. some of them came from your suggestion. 100%. I mean, most of them probably came from my suggestion. Yeah. yeah. You know, based on more recent expenditures. Right, and, right, right. So, so yeah. yeah, at the end, we'll go through. I can't, from when I sat through and listened to changes, mm -hmm. I can't imagine us voting against them. I don't, I don't disagree. I so, mean, they were, they were minimal and they were based on expenditures and most of them came from electricity because we were scared of what was going right. to happen. And then we over budgeted and now we can kind of bring it back down knowing um, yeah. where our expenditures are at. So. Agreed. Okay, so we'll do that on the 30th. Um, and just, this is more for just FYI, um, because we do have some couple bond articles on, we're gonna have to hold a bond hearing on the 3rd when they hold their um, yeah. public hearing as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we've always done that on the same day. Yeah, it makes so sense. Just so do it right. We just do ours before first and then they have their meeting. Yeah, we'll notice yeah. it and get that ball rolling because we only got a couple weeks for that, two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do have one non-public. Okay. Um, just when you we are uh, finished in public. Do we have a green folder? Is there anything in it? Yeah. Um, is it a letter to the Lincoln Select Board from our new executive counselor um, who's writing to introduce herself, Cindy Warmington. Um, she was on, but um, she'll be reaching out in the coming weeks to schedule a time for us to sit down and discuss how I can best serve Lincoln over the next two years. I also plan to attend one of your upcoming select board meetings to hear about the issues impacting your community and will reach out to you in advance of my visit. Nice. That's just the. Nope, that's, yeah. that's nice. I do have one more public item. So oh, like okay. Me too. I, yeah, I do too. Oh, Go ahead. Okay. I can, I can have the floor. Okay. Um, so um, something that has been brought up um, consistently since I came on board was how we accrue vacation and sick and how employees essentially are borrowing from one bank to replenish another bank because of the accrual, whether it's sick or whether it's vacation. If they wanna go on a vacation in February, they go on their vacation, but they technically haven't accrued enough vacation time. So then they're borrowing from their bank. And then it's a back and forth nightmare for Jana to track because then once they do accrue enough, then they want that time to go back into this bank. and. It's a nightmare for Jonathan to track, and especially as every single employee has a different approval rate. And once they get their anniversary, that changes the rate. So it's a nightmare. Um, the PD um, also has issues with this, and it's part of the provisions of the union negotiation to change that. I won't go anymore because legally we haven't signed anything yet. So John and I sat down and we contacted um, Peter Phillips, who is the CBA attorney, but he does other, you know, employee related mm -hmm. matters and, ex and ex expressed what we were going through and asked him if he could craft some language where we could essentially allow 
the employees to front load their time, but they would be understood that it's still based on a 12 months of service and it's still going to be prorated if they were to leave employment anytime within those 12 months and how we would recoup the money that essentially they had unearned or the yep. time that they had unearned. So um, I have some language proposed that I would like the board to consider to allow us to front load the vacation and sick time but also change our personnel policy. So in the event that an employee were to leave without accruing all their time, that we could then recoup it in their final um, paycheck. And if their final paycheck wouldn't cover the amount, then they would have to sign into a uh, payment plan or an agreement with the town to pay back anything that went you know, above and beyond what was prorated and due to them. Um, so if the board is agreeable to that, um, I'll send out the, um, the draft and the language, and then maybe at the next meeting, we could adopt it if the board was okay with that. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. I would, you know, I think that's a great idea what you're doing. Um, I, I can see in my own mind a couple of changes potentially because we have the same situation where I was, where we allow people to do that. Um, I let the staff look at the potential agreement and get their input too so they know what we why we're doing it what it means to them um what we made all new hires actually had a sign mm -hmm. that document saying that if i leave i am responsible because if i leave you and i owe you i'm going to florida the hell with you you, you ain't going to drag me down to florida you ain't going to spend the wheel with all but they signed so that we could attach we never had to do that, but you never know. Or even in the case of somebody being terminated mm -hmm. for cause, um, you know, and there were a couple of those and we had to go through civil service. So I, I just think that maybe get some staff on input. So we have, okay, we've done that and um, we will change our- Why did you tell me? I didn't have to <laughs> We've done that. We've, and um, a suggestion from Peter Phillips was to, on the time off request sheet, put that language at the bottom. So a check mark, I understand that if I'm taking my time, that's, okay. you know, where they yeah. check it off, they say, I understand that I haven't accrued this yet. And so if I leave, I got to pay it back. So okay. it's going to be on their time off request. So they know exactly what they're getting into in addition to changing the personnel policy. So they mirror each other. And is this going to make it easier for John to try? 100%. Okay. Um, uh, it's going to allow John to put everyone's time in at the beginning of the year. Do you have just, copies of it now? I, I, I have what? Yeah. Would you like a copy of what you want changed? Yes. Cool. Yes, I'd like it. I just didn't want to spring it on you because I kind of did it late this afternoon and heavier. But yes, it's going to save John hours of time because essentially she can just plug in everyone's total hours at the beginning of the year and just start subtracting. And it, in the event someone leaves, then she would only have to prorate it at that point for one person. One person, one time. One person, one As time. opposed to keeping track every day of off. Every full-time employee. Right. Perfect. That makes a lot of sense. And again, my concern was I didn't want, I don't want to call it abuse, but I didn't want the abuse of the policy to have us be in where people are just taking vacations and then we're never getting that money back if they haven't accrued it yet. Um, but this is something that Peter Phillips and I and John have kind of crafted the language together. So I wanted to, first, I wanted to make sure it was legal that we could do that. But um, <laughs> so all of this, language, all this up top will be gone. All correct. of this that's read yeah. out, um, yeah. you know, lying through it. And then the, it would start the amount. Yeah. Okay, it'll start with the amount. Yeah, the amount of vacation PTO yep. that full time employees. Oh, so see. this, um, and then also you want to amend the, um, in the the policy. Yes, yeah. thank you. This is Jesus. this is the policy. This, this, is, the this policy. is taken out of the policy. Correct. Okay, and then we'll just add this um, this paragraph. Mm -hmm. We'll add that to the bottom of the time off time off sheet. Yep. Okay. Time off sheets. Correct. So they check it, they understand it, they sign, and then they get either approved or denied for their time off. And as I said- And this language was abetted by Peter Phillips. That he drafted that language. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. Because it's- part I have no problem with it at all. I'll make a motion to approve the amendments to the um, paid time off eligibility portion of our policy. Um, personnel policy. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
I'll second that. Any discussion? I'm I'm good with it. I that uh, that I'm fine. I mean, I, I've read the parts that you've changed. I haven't read the parts that you haven't changed. But yeah, I understand. Standard line. Yeah. I don't need to look like that. I do. <laughs> yeah, I can <laughs> recite. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Awesome. Thank Thanks, you. Sir. We can sign it at the next meeting or whatever. Yeah, I'll bring in a revised copy. We'll probably just do an amendment or something, so we don't have to do the whole sure, sure. book of Ben. Yeah. But that is, I we had a staff meeting last week, and um, one of my goals for twenty three is to look at the personnel policy and try to, you know, if there's antiquated policies or if there's something that needs to be changed to kind of bring it up. So. Yeah, some of them may have to be in compliance with federal or ambulance. Exactly, stage. that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of yeah. stuff that we might yeah. need. Our, yeah. COVID, yeah. our COVID yeah. policies probably need to be changed at this point, too. Our COVID policy <laughs> should probably be changed. Mm -hmm. I actually think the last time we did it, we made it pretty, um, I don't want to say generic, but we made it very flexible. Yeah. So, yeah. like, if, yeah. if things ramped up again, we could do yeah. things. And if, yeah. yeah. That's all I have oh. for real. All story. right. Um, I know you'd talk to you, but just to talk about it in public and with the other two selectmen, Granicus. It's a big um, issue. I I don't know what you know or don't know, but I don't know anything. Okay. And I'm even okay. Dumb and dumb. We we had Granicus mm -hmm. um start in July, June, July, um, to, to put our short-term rental thing together. Mm -hmm. And from the live feed that I was on with mm -hmm. her, it looks like they did a great job tracking, finding, categorizing these potential rentals. Yep. Then they were gonna have this live thing where, where people with rentals could go online and register their short-term rental online, pay for it online and make it real slick and have that ready for the end of the year um, originally, we we're going to try to do this in in, um, in the fall mm -hmm. to get some 2022 revenue mm -hmm. from the rentals. Well, it wasn't ready to go, mm -hmm. and it's still not ready to go. But they didn't even know that; they thought it was. Mm -hmm. And so, I tried to register and have tried numerous times, and um, it it won't accept. Of my registration yeah we're having but there's a snag in the payment processing section of the portal right now this is a technology company mm -hmm. that has sold us a technology product that doesn't work and the in the part that doesn't work is something that so I mean, millions of other websites use mm -hmm. payment processes you can put in your credit card, you can put in your ACH yeah. number, and neither one of them works with Granicus. Mm -hmm. and, and I am beyond disappointed um, and was hoping that, that that we'd have an announcement at this meeting that it's all fixed and we're, we're out. No, I've been pretty much in email contact with them every day. I did speak to someone live uh, last week. I've been told that they're doing everything they can, everything they can to resolve the issue. They told me they didn't. They didn't know if they could. They didn't know if it was the credit card processing, the Stripe, which is the company that we use to process, or if it was a issue in the mobile permitting end on their end or on Stripe's end, and that's what they were trying to identify. Have we paid them any money? We've paid them for two quarters. And they brought in zero revenue through the. They've identified. We brought, we brought in four hundred dollars to the through the website, so it worked for a very short time, and then it stopped working. Do you know how those two people paid? Credit card. Both credit well, cards. Well, actually, we've collected $400. There's been three credit cards and one ACH payment. So well, both types. All right. Mm -hmm. I've tried both types. And yeah. What, well, we, on, what right. do we pay them? Probably twelve, twelve thousand dollars I think we paid, I think it's I think quarterly we're paying eight because eight, it's like 30 six, something yeah. in change. So I think we paid them like 16. 16 dollars Yeah. Um Yes, I, I agree. I'm extremely disappointed. Um, I think, um, and I've expressed my uh, uh, concern and I've expressed my frustration that, you know, I think part of the issue is, is that um, they're experiencing stuff turnover just like everyone else is. And, you know, we've had multiple different service reps throughout the six months period that we've been working with them. And so it, it's kind of hard for us to have one contact point when we have a contact for six weeks and then they say, 
and then they're and then they're gone and we're moved on to someone else. So um, you were not alone. The phone calls we've been getting in house about registering their short term rentals are now every single day, multiple times a day, people are trying. Um, we've stopped directing people to the website at all. We've told people that they can send their checks in, which we don't want to do because it defeats the purpose mm -hmm. of the whole program. Um, but we've started to punch some of those in manually because at least we can get some cash. Get some cash. Right. I, I, you know, I think, again, I, I play hideball with this. If we could, without spending hours upon hours upon hours, look at what we brought in last year, um, you know, in 2022, which look what we didn't get mm -hmm. and then say, look, we're going to re de reduce the amount of quarterly payment based on revenue we could have. You don't like it, Mark. Mm, well, we're not paying anything until they no, no, really I, have I, a product. But, yeah. exactly. but, but we've actually lost no, we right. we've actually lost money and we paid them for lost money. Mm -hmm. So they owe us money in, the, in, in my opinion. So, you know, Maybe we ride free the next quarter or something like that. I, I don't know, but you, you, you've you got to play hardball with them because there are other companies out there that want our business. And if it's not working, like you say, you can't pay. So, you know, you, they're not accepting our money. Why am I, what am I going to do? No, I mean, and supposedly we're talking to the, you know, the lead customer, you know, the managed, you know, yeah. the, but there's, everyone has a boss, right? So we just have to keep on climbing higher on that rung. Um, but it, it's, it is disappointing. Absolutely. We were sold on a product and they have yet to deliver. Yeah. And, and again, their search. Yeah. What I the saw. The platform itself is. Platform. Right. Look. It looked, looked great. Very good. Yeah. From, from that presentation. And, and it looks like they've done a lot of work and found a lot of, of units. Right. It's just now that they can't get registered. And, and it, well, and. Well, we're not the biggest community that they do this for, so I don't understand. That's what I you know. understand. Like, are we the only one with what did you call it? Was stripe? Stripe. Yeah, we're the only one with stripe, and there's a problem with that. I mean, I no, right? No, and well, and then at one point they were directing people to Lincoln, Nebraska. Well, that's I got that email. From yeah, them too. yeah, I did get an apology for that. If someone called me personally and said I, I apologize, that was yeah. But you just made a statement that they found us many. I mean, we had already found the majority of them. That they refound. Um, I, you know, I think we had our own folks that found roughly six hundred at one point in time, or four hundred something. 400. We had four hundred. They're they're hovering around six. Six. So, so an extra two hundred. You know, right now, uh, you yeah. know. So, but we found that there was inconsistencies in the way that people were registering. Like I, uh, I think we mentioned like the Mount Puppet Loom. You could actually have, I have room 305, 308. That's two separate entities I can rent out at any given yeah, time. Yeah, right, right. So they were, we were counting that as one. Now they're counting that as two. Right. So yes, they found it, but I think we would have found it ourselves. Yeah, I, I will, I, I know you keep wanting, I just wanted to bring this up and no, look absolutely. So that people yeah. know why, why we're not why we're not registering right. and getting well, like I said, it. we're getting phone calls of people who want to do the right thing yep. and we don't want to discourage them because at some point when you're like, I've been trying to give you my money for two months, exactly. They're gonna get fed up. So right. All right. Um with that being said, I had this as an Kind of an open topic on my board of selectmen's annual report mm -hmm. not knowing if it was going to be resolved i would have mentioned that in the report okay. pleasantly right uh, jane wants it by the end of the month and this i mean our next meeting is the day before the end of the month right. so i'm ready to submit my report i'll give give you guys actually um it's our report i just write it but I'll give you the thank you. With thank the, you. With the, with the, with the, with the, thank you. It's good. I approve it. I will get it to you. The other question I wanted to bring up is the tank wreck ski area. Mm -hmm. That was what was on my that, that email. Yeah. I would like to schedule a joint board of select the meeting because this is a joint issue. I don't want to make any decisions for the outlook stop selecting. So could you reach out and see when I don't either we go to them on one of their meetings or they come to one of ours? I don't care either way. Okay. Um, and you folks, you know, as someone that's not that familiar with the Kang Press, I, I read the email. I don't know the person that sent the email. Martin was her last name, mm -hmm. if I believe correct. Um, and, you know, it sounds like she's had a lot of involvement in what 
she was saying it. Is that feasible to do? Again, I don't know the operations down there. And uh, you know, some some things some are. are yeah. yeah, some things yeah. are. Some are done. It's it's hard because this is the first year after COVID that things are opening up. Some people are still really nervous about that. Some aren't. It's you know a mixed bag, and nobody likes change, especially somebody that grew up here when the pens go there, and now all of a sudden the pens are over here. People have a hard time with that. I get it. I'm one of those people myself. Um, some changes have been made. Um, then you also my reply. You know, we always have comfy furniture, but it was again, it was all yard sale finds, and and that's not to say we couldn't go out on Facebook and get stuff. We just didn't because it's usually yard sale stuff. Do you know what I mean? It's we didn't. You know, so I get where the the. Um, I don't say anger because it's not anger. No, it's a very we changed change. some things. You know. Um, I did look, and actually her husband was there, who is in the construction business, yeah. one day when I was there, Mark, 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 yeah. and I asked his opinion on, you know, relocating that ski up candy window, and where it's, what she proposes it goes is right in the traffic path of people coming in to sign in or into the building or out of the building to leave, it's right there, and kids literally ski up to it. So it's just it's not going to work. It just won't work. Um, I don't want to get rid of the skate window because the kids love it. They, I mean, they absolutely love it. There's not a single kid there that's not going to be upset if it's gone. So what the penny store? Or... Yeah, the candy window. So you have candy window. I yeah. mean, it's, the cake is there for the kids. Right. It's it's a bonus that we parents and grandparents get to sit inside where it's warm and watch them ski. However, it's still there for the kids. And not to say parents and grandparents can't ski either, but so there are some things that you know things were moved out of the way. Um, the couch was but then, there is a couch that was put down, and a table was added. You know stuff. Right. When the window gets fixed upstairs, you know upstairs get, we'll get the, well the, provided right. we have some stuff. oversight because there was some stuff going on that shouldn't. And um, but I mean, there's plenty of parent volunteers that will volunteer to sit up there with the kids for a few hours in the afternoon or morning or whatever. I mean, that's not a problem. I don't see that being an issue at all. Um, once the window's fixed. What's what's with the window? There's a, a, a window that was broken and um, was kind of mm, finagled all the right <laughs> summer so we could get the air conditioner unit in there. So that the um, summer camp kids could use it up there because it gets hot in the caves and sure. the attic sure. area, you know, upstairs. Right. Um, but it was literally the window was like screwed in. There's two staircases, there is another window. So it wasn't a safety issue. Um, however, this AC unit can't come out now because until the window is replaced, um, and there was an issue with the ordering of the window. So we're just waiting now. So how'd the window get broken? Um, it's probably 40 years old okay. and worn out. I, you know. Somebody got angry. We were there one, one day, actually, years ago. Dave Dovalock was there. I think it was movie night, February vacation week. My kids were little. And the window, literally, the bottom part of it came out and tumbled down the stairs and landed on the floor and didn't break. Wow. It didn't break. And Dave Dovalock looked around, picked it up, went upstairs and had it back in there okay, but was like, did that really just happen? Yeah. Same window still, so it just needs replacing and it's being handled. Yeah, Tara and I talked about, we're, we're never gonna turn someone away who wants to improve no. a town building at no cost to like volunteer to help us right. out. We're never gonna turn someone away to do so, but we also have to keep our operations in mind when that happens and it right. may not, like Tim said, it may not be how it always has been. COVID was miserable in a lot of ways, yeah. but it also taught us how to do things on a reduced staff, reduced budget, reduced time, and it, it made us more efficient in some ways. So there are things that COVID has taught us that are probably beneficial that we'll, we'll take into the future with us. Um, but we're kind of in that middle ground right now where we can do some things relatively easily, but we can't check all the boxes right. and everything that needs to be done. And we aren't necessarily gonna go back to the old way of doing things. Okay, yeah. but let's, before we get too far into this, I mean, I, I, her concerns, thoughts, ideas are valid. Some of them are fantastic, I totally agree. However, we need to make this a joint meeting and notice it so that people can come in and comment and ask questions in both boards. Um, I did not 
uh, for those emails to Woodstock. Um, if you could do that sure. and ask um, for a joint meeting, whether at one of our regular scheduled meetings or at one of theirs, I don't mind. Go, I don't care. It's up to them. They can come here. We can go there. Doesn't matter. Um, I know Cheryl was copied on. Cheryl is copied on. Cheryl, I did. I did copy Cheryl. You're right. Yep. I did. Yep. She I is did definitely say that. that. I definitely yep. copied because you weren't copied and Cheryl wasn't. So when I did my initial reply, I added the two of you. Yeah, and then I think we which, were on after that. It was replying yeah. all after that. And then yeah. you still come up as Butch Burbank in my computer, and I don't know how to fix that. Sorry. <laughs> well, no. You're not calling me Butch. I fixed it, though. If you look into the contacts in here, it has your name. But yet I can post an email, and it comes up Butch. So I don't know what I did. Weird. Yeah. But no, I um, think, you know. I'm going to disagree with you just a little bit. Okay. I, I agree about the part where it's all about the kids. Yeah. I think that that the because I went in there over the weekend, the blocking off of that window area looks awful. I don't disagree. Okay. And my thought is that, that number one, there's the sense of community that's built up there is more important than the candy. I would like to see, you say that candy the 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 kids kids sold in that building for 40 years without a window. Okay, now Corona, okay. COVID, taught, COVID taught us some stuff. They do like it. But I think that the, the sense of community, the interaction with kids and kids and adults, I walked in there the other day and there was a group of, of I don't know, eight year olds and 50 year olds playing trivia pursuit together. Mm, yeah. Okay. That's the that's kind the, of, that's, that's a, I love it. Scary. I love it. I love and that's place. not happening when you get this big barricade in there. Um, See, I would like to um, update the antiquated kitchen and move the entrance to the front of the building by the parking lot, bring the kitchen that way, move the candy window, candy window to the corner, and you're not getting the traffic back and forth in front of that. If you move the candy window to the back of the building facing the road, put a moat around it and didn't light it up at night, the kids are still going to find the, the candy window because they're kids. Right, but if we put it in the kitchen, we eliminate a staff member too. We don't need someone in the kitchen and someone at the candy window. Or if you go back to the way it's been for years, you have one staff member in the kitchen. I'm 100% against eliminating the candy window. I you think watch it, those kids. They love it. They're gonna find. They're gonna come in the building and they're gonna socialize, warm up, talk to adults, and all that when they get come in and buy the candy, like they have for forty years. Some of them ski up to the candy window, buy the candy, and then come in and eat it. It's the ski up candy window that they love. How many places have you seen a ski up candy window? I mean, come on, they love it. I guess it's a matter of priorities. I think that that making that inviting for for kids who don't ski and for adults who want to sit there and watch. The slope, I mean, the the barricades up there, it, it just, it looks awful. I think it, it, it's, I don't like it. I'll have to take a look. You'll have to take a look at it. In the essence of summer, so. No, I will have to go. I think summer. kids will come inside to buy candy. I think it just makes it more appealing and comfortable for the people who are inside, including the adults who help provide supervision, who help provide a sense of community, who play Trivial Pursuit with eight-year-olds. Um, I, I, spoons I don't think it's really important. Play. Get the cards out and play spoons. Around the table. Exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, we've been selling it behind that counter for years and that'll still work. If you want to just, if you really want that window, there's a way to make it work out front. Right where, you know, right where the, right the without, without moving kitchens and doors. Right at the door. It's not right at the door. It it's is. 10 feet in front of it. Thanks. What do, where, where do you measure? The door is literally about three and a half feet from the edge of that window. We can't go out front facing the road. That window is over there. there. How long is the window? That window is, I don't know, what is it, a three foot window? And is, then you have, have the one window up in that, in the kitchen facing out? No, no there's one. All right. Single one. I'm and sure you, you right. have to eliminate all the counter and cabinet storage space, which is, at a premium there to begin with, because you're not going to reach over a foot, two and a half foot counter. Sure you can. Out, out to, to little Johnny that's out there trying to reach. Yeah, no, that's not. You'd have to get rid of that whole counter. 
to get up close enough to the window to hand it out to them. I think we can probably find a happy medium I'm, for I everybody. Know we can. I, I, I know we can. Uh, however you do it, I'm in favor of getting clearing out those windows so that there's a view. I mean, it's it's not it's not a major town decision. I don't even think we have to meet with the other board to decide over where we're going to sell candy. It's not that big of a deal. That's my opinion. Okay. <clears throat> I'm just going to let everybody, all of the kids know that there's two people to blame for the loss of the candy window. You're only one of them. <laughs> Vicky. <I'm> Vicky. <laughs> yep. Vicky Martin and OJ Robinson. That's why we have no ski of candy window. I'm going to make a sign. I'm putting on Facebook. OJ hates candy and children. And children. <laughs> that's, that's the motto. There we go. That'll be my campaign slogan. <laughs> that's the motto. That was good. That was good. Oh, I, think right. I think there is a happy medium. It's and, gotta be and maybe, maybe we could. There is a happy medium because we've already started doing some of the things, right? Yeah. So maybe the only thing that isn't really, really done is the candy window. And the kids love it. They love it. Do we have an employee sitting outside at a table with a with a gun? No, that last year we did when we weren't letting people. There was someone there last weekend. We have the well, with one person checking in, but they were inside when I was there. Oh, and then the, 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 table, the, was, the table was outside. Well, that was and they were floating in and out. Yeah. One. And then and so someone can candy, candy and someone do the lunch counter. Or do they float back and forth? Lunches, I think. What now? When they do lunches, it's a, it's just for that mm -hmm. hour or two that they do there. Yeah. It's children. All right. It's yeah, it's children. It's what, candy. That's it. That's all there is to it. Change is hard. Would you know this? Do you want me to reach out to Woodstock and see if they think a joint meeting is necessary? I think that the joint meeting has been requested, and we should have one. It's pretty clear in her last email that please let me know when the joint meeting is going to be. So I that was after you said that that would be the solution. I just don't think we need a joint meeting over a candy counter. I'm not opposed to we it. We also did agree that we were going to meet four times a year and haven't been doing that because of COVID. So maybe we need to get back to meeting quarterly like we the two boards said we were going to. Maybe we propose a meeting for February to kind of do an all-inclusive meeting of the minds. We can address all the issues, not just the kink rec area. If there are any other I issues, I don't know. I don't care either way, honestly. At this point, it's we have someone that requested a joint. She wanted to attend a joint meeting. Let her know when it is scheduled. The next one is scheduled for. We also agreed as two boards, joint boards, to meet four times a year. I agree it was prior to COVID hitting, and that's why we didn't. However, that's not the issue anymore. If we're going to Meet four times a year, we should do that. Meet quarterly. But if OJ hates joint meetings and children and candy. <laughs> and mothers and grandmothers. Yes. Let's just add everything in there. And ponies. He hates ponies. Um. <laughs> what do you think, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go take a look and, uh, you know, take that copy of that email with me and uh, see what I think. Report back at the next meeting? I will report back at the next meeting. Okay. We'll wait till the next meeting. Then. Okay. That was the only two things I had. Okay. You have something? I did. Um, we have talked, or I have talked anyways, at one point in time about possibly putting a warrant article um, after conferring with a, an attorney um, to potentially um, change the zoning of the industrial park. It's too and, uh, late for that. Huh? It's too late for that now. It is too late for that. Yeah, 23. Yeah. And things, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I might bring it up just to discuss and get the consensus of people because I've been approached by people that are in favor of it and people that are... Uh, change the zoning from what it is now to... Uh, general use, general uh, use. So, so residential you could do residential and this ties into the meeting that the two meetings that we've had with uh, affordable or, or workforce housing mm -hmm. 
Um, because again, us as, as select board, I mean, you folks have been around longer than I have, but that park's been in existence since 2004, 2005. Mm -hmm. There's only two lots over there. I've spoken with both Mike Donahue and Kevin Sullivan. They said, no problem, Jack. I mean, you know, Paul Bowden said, well, what if my great grandson wants to? I said, well, let him build it down in South Carolina. You own land down there, so go down there or whatever. But, you know, I mean, the point being that it's underutilized for tax purposes for the town. Mm -hmm. I mean, I even in the back of my mind, I said, geez, if we didn't do that, maybe we could relocate the skate park over there or something. But, you know, I'd rather see us get some tax revenue without one person that was against it. Um, Long-term resident grew up here, said to me, what about the, ta uh, the traffic, Jack? I said, well, I said, you wouldn't have, you know, how many units you had in there go working at the same time. So not everybody's going to hit the school bell and they're going to go work there. I mean, you know, yeah, kids are going to go to school. And, might yeah, change that, that. Is, but yeah. again you know i'm thinking of how the town can it can play into doing something for workforce slash affordable housing we'll have to remember to to have this discussion a little earlier next yes, year that yeah. essentially yeah. would have to be in the it would planning, have to be a planning board thing, a honestly, planning like, board yeah. proposal it would have okay. to go on the ballot so the planning board um their last uh, the, the last date to hold a meeting on zoning ordinance changes is next week. Yeah. So it's much earlier. It starts in November. Okay. Yeah. So we got to think about it this fall. So uh, OJ, you are the <laughs> you are the selectman's representative on the planning board. Could you have that conversation or whatever at the appropriate time? Yeah. And and again, you know, because that would be in favor of that. Well, you know, it, it's something it's to, to. I mean, and it's not just workforce housing. Right. I think you. I know I've been approached by two people in town that, that have uh, you know kids that came back to live with them. One got married. One just came from another part of the country, mm -hmm. and they're living in a basement. The other one want to have as a family. They've got a two bedroom unit. They can't have a family because the parents are there. They're there. They, we don't have space and. We can't afford anything. We can't buy anything. You, I don't have to tell you. You know what the mill houses are going for. Absolutely. I mean, you know, and you know, so you we've know, said it a million people times. People making millions on Airbnbs and not being registered and things like that. <laughs> it's just underutilized and under. You know. When the the whole thing was built, we needed a place for small businesses. Yeah. That's so far gone now. We need workforce housing. We need housing for local folks that work in town mm -hmm. that right. our, our waitresses our our housekeepers our um our bartenders our, our you know gas station workers our town employees our school teachers right. we lost school teachers without because they, we don't have they want to remain, we, we need remain in town that, you have to build something and they can afford we need workforce housing so yeah we're not 100 agree and i have been approached by a couple of people that have fossils that uh, you know um would be willing to and that are you know, that are zoned general usage. So uh, one good size fossil, three plus acres. I approach somebody else that has hundreds of acres and they're not interested uh, in, in doing it. And then somebody else had a great idea. I, I met with the gentleman. Uh, I'll go in and then not sure. Talk, uh, sure. I didn't have anything else. Nothing else? Nothing else to talk about? Sure. Well, we ought to give me a minute. No, not even with children and candy. Look, look what he did. Do you see what he did when you were doing that? He kicked your sign off and threw it on the ground. No, he kicked me. Oh, it's right up there. Yeah. I'll make a motion to go to non public for is it just now? Yeah. A. Okay. A. Yes. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Awesome. Shut the door. Oh, gosh. Um, Sitting here long enough for the morning session. Uh, did you stop recording? Sure. Yeah, just and yeah, and bra.